starting in the back of the pack. You know, we've talked about all the changes that have been made here at the Bristol Motor Speedway. There's a slight change on the racetrack. Four foot wider, four feet wider, I should say, coming off of turn two and all the way down the back stretch. Being I don't know how much of a difference that's going to make, but there's a bigger problem than that. Oh, yeah, every little bit helps, but 43 cars today. Darrell Walter will start 43rd. And, folks, there's a lot of great cars back there. Ned, my question, can they get through the traffic before Rusty Wallace, who's blind and fast, laps them? Well, it'd be tough. This traditionally is a one-group racetrack, especially in the first half of the race. They run right down on the bottom of the racetrack. Tough to pass on this racetrack, but that helps to make it very exciting and all of that bumping and grinding that we usually see. Back here on the back stretch, there's not much going on right now because the cars have not rolled off yet, but that won't happen for very long. There'll be a lot of action back here on the back stretch. And you know what? There's a lot of drivers that'll be pitting back here on the back stretch that are very, very good drivers. We've heard all the statistics about Darrell Waltrip. 12 wins right here at Bristol. He's starting way in the back, 43rd with a past champions provisional. Another couple of guys to look at. Look at this. Car number three back here. Dale Earnhardt, eight wins here at Bristol. He's on the back stretch, and so is Mark Martin. Martin. Mark Martin, a former winner here at the track. So a lot of cars back here. Look right here. Here's the STP Pontiac. Bobby Hamilton, he's a great short track driver. So we'll see some guys with a big disadvantage today pitting on the backstretch. Right, you talked about the largest field in the modern era of NASCAR Winston Cup racing. Let's take a look at how they're comprised today. 20 Fords, 15 Chevrolets, 8 Pontiacs, 10 points separate them in the Manufacturers Championships. Chevrolet back of Ford by 10 and Pontiac back of Chevrolet by 10. Those that missed the field, there were 47 cars here. 43 will start. Bobby Helen, Billy Standards, Mike Wallace, and Greg Sachs had to go home. They didn't get a second chance to qualify because rain washed out qualifying on Saturday. So how do they line up? Well, let's take a look here at the starting lineup for today's Food City 500. Front row, his 18th career pole in first this June of 1994. Rusty Wallace, Sterling Marlin beside him, trying to capitalize on an eighth place finish at Texas. Row two, Ted Musgrave. Kenny rebound from finishing 35th out in Fort Worth. Kenny Wallace, his best starting spot this year in Winston Cup. Back in row three, both these guys have won twice in 1997. Jeff Gordon's won two in a row here. Jarrett looking for that first short track win. Back in row four. Hutch Strickland, his third top 10 start of the 1997 season, and Jeff Bodine climbing up in those Winston Cup points. Back in row five, Steve Grissom finished 10th at Texas, likes this racetrack, and Jimmy Spencer, Mr. Excitement Boy, what Bristol could do with him. In row six, Jeff Burton, the winner last week in Texas alongside Brett Bodine. Row seven this afternoon. On the inside, Bobby Labonte. And on the outside, Kyle Petty, probably the fastest Pontiac here. Row eight, Robert Presley and Kenny Schrader. As the cars roll off, we'll look at row nine, Terry Labonte with six defending champion, and Bill Elliott. And in row 10, Dick Triple and Robbie Gordon. And in row at number 11, we see Chad Little and Ricky Rudd. Of course, they're hitting on the back stretch. All of these cars from here on back. Row 12, we find Mark Martin and Joe Nemechek. Row 13 is Rick Mass with John and Reddy. Row 14 is David Green and Mike Skinner. And in row 15, we have Dale Earnhardt and Ed Perry. Back in row 16, Lake Speed and the Harry Melling on four. Jeremy Mayfield drives for the Cranifus Haas team. Row 17 inside will be Johnny Benson's Penzoil Pontiac. It's an all Pontiac row 17. Bobby Hamilton, watch him to come in a hurry. Back in row 18, Ward Burton, another Pontiac. MBA the sponsor, and the Skittles Pontiac Grand Prix of Derek Cope. Row 19, Gary Bradbury on the inside, and Ernie Irvin's worst starting spot of the year outside of row 19. Row 20, Michael Waltrip, Sitco Ford, alongside with provisional starting spot Jack Sprague, subbing for the injured Ricky Craven. And the last row, or next little last row, I should say, Morgan Shepard and Dave Marcus. And starting 43rd, DW, Darrell Walter. Well, talk about a tough racetrack. Take a look at the caution laps. First four events of the year, there were only 133 cautions. The last two races at Darlington 
and Texas. There were 133 caution laps just in those two events alone. So, folks, we're in for a barn burner. Here is Jack Sprague's in-car camera. Sprague, the 32-year-old driver, subbing for the injured Ricky Craven. He starts back of the pack. Now look underneath the 21 Sitco car of Michael Walter. That is the drive shaft. Benny and Ned will tell you all about what that does and what the other parts are going to do. We rotate that camera around during the day. How about Mike Skinner, the Lowe's Chevrolet? Second Richard Childers on the car. Skinner starts in 28th spot. Mark Martin will be starting in the rear. We're riding alongside Mark Martin. He will be pitted in the back pits. We'll see what kind of disadvantage, disadvantage that is during the day. This is on board Robbie Gordon's Coors Light Chevrolet. Starting right behind Bill Elliott. And there is Rusty Wallace, our pole sitter. He has only the pace car to see in front of him, and the pace car will be leaving in just a moment to a clean racetrack in front of him. Preparing for the start, getting winding back and forth, trying to get some heat in these tires. It's extremely cold, but some milestones being set today. Bill Elliott's 500 career start, Jeff Bonai, 450, and Rusty Wallace on the pole, his 400th career start dating back to Atlanta back in 1980. Taking a couple extra laps, or at least an extra lap here, Jerry, because it's so cold here today. It's colder than anyone thought it might be. It's overcast here in Bristol. I don't think there's any threat of rain, but it is overcast and cold, so they give them plenty of time to heat the oil up in these engines and also in the rear gear. And what a crowd. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching history being made today. The largest sporting sports event crowd to see event, a live event in Tennessee history, 118,000. And some of those great shots from high above this Rose Bowl of racetracks come courtesy of the fine folks from Pennzoil, our Pennzoil Copter Cam. High above the half mile Bristol Motor Speedway. They gave the signal now, one more lap, and we'll be going green. Yes, the engine oil the cars use is 20W50. It's very thick. Also, the lubricant in the rear gearing is 140 weight. Imagine it is very, very thick. It takes some time to get that up to temperature. And this morning, it's only 55 degrees here and sunshine. Instead, it's overcast and maybe 40 degrees. 500 laps on a half mile racetrack. $1.37 million up for grabs. Ford and Chevrolet on the front row. Rusty and Sterling side by side as the safety car begins to pull away. Crowds on their feet, 118,043 cars come to life out of turn four as the green flag waves at Thunder Valley. Side. There's Skinner, in the car number 31, running up on the outside. And look at those cars dance around us. We're right along with Mike Skinner as he drives up on the outside or drives on the outside of Lake Speed. Meanwhile, that's the 37 car, Jeremy Mayfield behind him, and finally Skinner gets away to get in, but Ernie still on the outside as Ed Berry in the 95 goes by. Here comes Benson. I think Ernie was trying to make a pass there on the outside, but just couldn't uh, quite do it. He saw the back end of his car break loose as he came off the turn. And Michael Walker for car number 21. He's been shown in 37th position. Folks, it is that tough to pass here at Bristol. One groove racetrack and maybe a groove and a half at best. There's the 43 car that was so good in Happy hour yesterday, Bobby Hamilton's Pontiac took off like a rocket in that final 60 minutes. Yes, very, very good car. You see him move up on the inside. 
Take a look on the inside of Mike Walter. Can't quite make it. But Strickland, who started up in uh, seventh position, is caught up on the outside. Well, look at that run that Hamilton gets off the corner. Once again, can't quite make it. And this time, Michael slips up a little bit. Hamilton takes a look, still cannot take that position away. Meanwhile, back up front, Sterling Rollins says, hey, Rusty, don't forget the right. Rusty <laughs> Wallace has pulled away a full straightaway in just nine laps. That's how good Rusty Wallace's Miller Lite Ford is. And you heard some of the drivers in our, in our NASCAR Today show back down. Jeremy went up and said, hey, it's however fast Rusty will be able to the pace is going to be today. They knew that Rusty would be tough. He was awfully good from the time they unloaded his car here on Friday morning. And uh, hasn't let up a bit. And he watched that out there running by himself. He's he's not too far from lapping the first cars up there. Darrell Walter, his car currently running in the third position. On Radio Shack Field Summary shows you where your favorite driver is running. In parentheses, it shows you where they started. Dale Jarrett started six and still six. That's where Michael gained his spot. And here's trouble up in turn three, turn four. Bobby Hamilton gets tagged from behind trying to slow down. Just a wall, caution out. That's John and Middle Randy. lane's clear. Watch the 98. You'll be all right. The car number nine involved with Lake Speed. John Andretti still headed in the wrong direction in the RCA Ford. He was one of the two cars initially involved. And as you said, Ned, Bobby Hamilton sort of got tagged from behind just trying to slow down. Here's what happened. Going in the corner. There we see the 98 car goes in the corner. Robbie Gordon gets in the left rear. Around he goes Earnhardt. Luckily gets by with Lake Speed, no place to go, makes contact with the wall and John Andre at the same time. All right, from the in car camera, Robbie Gordon did. Here's what he saw. He's running right behind Joe Dimacek, and there he runs up, tries to get on the inside of John Andre, he flips his left rear quarter panel and sends him on around. Robbie Gordon continues to go on. Under caution for the first time here at Bristol Motor Speedway today. First of all, there'll probably be many. Rusty Wallace, our leader, will be right back. Our Speed World coverage of the 37th running of the NASCAR Winston Cup Food City 500 from Thunder Valley here in Bristol Motor Speedway is being brought to you by Texaco Haviland Formula 3 Motor Oil. Add more life to your car, take it to the star. By the more than 1,525 AutoZone stores across America, AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts, and by the legendary Firebird Trans Am from Pontiac. High above this Thunder Valley, 118,000 people. And the true value man of the race is the winner of last week's Interstate Batteries 500. There he is, Jeff Burton. True value on behalf of Jeff is donating $1,000 to his favorite charity, which is the South Boston JCs. The JCs are involved in so many organizations, including the Halifax County Dixie Youth Baseball League and the Patrick Henry Boys Plantation. Congratulations to Jeff Burton, our true value man of the race. Let's go down the right. Well, Dr. Punch, uh, Lake Speed continues to sit here on the pit road. He just cannot catch a break in Winston Cup racing this year. It appears the right front A-frame is broken on the Melling Ford. Up right for Lake Speed. Restart on lap 19 for five laps under the yellow. We'll see if uh, possibly Sterling Marlin can keep Russell from getting away this time. <laughs> between the four car and the 16. Sterling Marlin trying to keep up with Rusty Wallace in that pace he's sitting. Gets in the corner a little bit too hard. Moved up the racetrack. Musgrave almost took the spot away. There was some contact. Now a change back for the fourth position. Jeff Gordon is gone by Kenny Wallace. Made the move up in turn three to take the spot away. Gordon now fourth. Wallace fifth. And that's Dale Jarrett sixth. With Jeff going on right behind him. There's Ted Musgrave once again trying to make a move beneath Sterling Marlin. Musgrave knows that Rusty's getting away, but Marlin's doing everything he can to keep that car on the bottom of the racetrack. Again, he cannot make a move. He has been working on him really since the drop of the green flag, not only this drop of the green flag, but 
even before when we first started this race, but it just can't get around. I finally see something that's going to slow Rusty Wallace down. It's traffic, and it's right in front of him. They have caught the tail end of the field, Rusty has. You can see the lead that he has over the four car, but there's the traffic, the 98 car of John Andretti will be the first one that's involved in that uh, spin a little bit ago. There's John Andretti right in front of Rusty Wallace's car from the camera looking out the front of me. He, he closes behind Andretti and a little bit of smoke out of Andretti's car. That's the Miller Light in-car camera, Rusty Wallace. Side by side battle, Robert Presley zipped to the inside of Hutt Strickland will take the spot away. And while that's going on, Jeff Gordon zipped on the inside of Ted Musgrave and took over third. Racing all around this half mile facility. It happens in a hurry. Mark Martin makes a move inside the McDonald's for to Bill Elliott. They are side by side off turn two. Chad Luke watches all that, says, I want to follow Mark, but Bill Elliott is able to block that move. Well, Ted Musgrave's car has, uh, as we watch this action back here, Musgrave's car, he's lost several positions good there for a moment and then all of a sudden he's not so good. Here's the battle for second spot as Jeff Gordon now moves to within a half a car length of Sterling Marlin. There's Rusty Wallace. He's already gone off of turn four. Here's the second and third place cars. A pair of Chevy Monte Carlos. We are told Ted Musgrave reporting that his car is very loose so that would explain it while he's dropping back and losing some spots. Yeah he's tried to he's gotten the car back down on the inside after losing back to fifth position. He was fighting for second not too long ago. And one problem one reason for that yesterday afternoon in that practice the happy hour practice all the cars were very very tight. All the drivers all the crew this, crewmen this morning loosen the cars up trying to get them to turn and we just knew that some of them would go too far. Of course they were taking into consider consideration the cool temperature here today. They figured that tightened the track up even more. So yeah, some of them probably went over the Take a look at Rusty Wallace's speed with a clear racetrack 116 miles an hour almost seven tenths of a mile an hour faster. And now with traffic you see that uh, he's back down to one of the other for the 24 car. That's Jeff Gordon. Now you know why he's coming in a hurry. Look at his speed last time by. Kyle Petty, the 44 car, right in the middle of the screen. A lot of folks down in the garage here talking about how fast that Pontiac was. And the battle still raging for the second spot. Jeff Gordon having won the last two Food City 500s in a row back in 95, 96. There's Rusty Wallace, only the second race in 1997, and he has led. The other one, well, he won it at Richmond, Virginia. That's Gary Bradbury. As we see him from the Miller Lite onboard camera. That's the Miller Lite in car. We're watching as he makes a move underneath Bradbury. Can't quite make the move. Camera almost had a real shot there as Rusty's trying to get by Bradbury. Obviously, Bradbury would like to stay there and cause the play comes out. He gets to make up almost a full half mile. Now watch that car dance around there in front of Rusty Wallace's Miller Light in car camera, just bobbing and weaving and dancing. And while that's going on, Jerry, the four car of Sterling Marlin and 24 Jeff Gordon are catching him. Oh, Bradbury almost spun as he came off the corner. And finally, you see Gordon on the inside of the four car at the same time. Rusty Wallace gets by Bradbury. Now Rusty made a pass. Jeff made a pass. And now we'll see if the 24 car can reel in Rusty's car number two. Our Radio Shack field summary showing you where your favorite drivers are running. There's the 81 car of Kenny Wallace. Place car. Sixteen and eighty-eight cars. The Prime Star Family Channel Ford of Musgrave. Who reported a loose condition. He's right in front of Dale Jarrett. If you're wondering why Dale hasn't passed him, I would expect 
that Dale being the point leader is going to be a little careful. Well, he's going to be careful, but I think his car's loose also, Jerry. I've been watching he and, and Musgrave, they're running together, and both of them seem to be pretty loose. Ted might be a little bit looser than Dale, but they're both not exactly like they like to be right now. There's Dale Earnhardt making a little bit. He by the Joe Nemechek car. Puts him in 23rd, started 29th, so he's gained six spots. All he wants to do right now is stay in front of Rusty Wallace or the leader, whoever that may be. That's his job. Stay in front of the leader. Ricky Rudd, Dick Strickland, Hutch Strickland. That's about for 20th, 21st, 22nd. And Mark Martin goes by Spencer. Well, how about the move he has made? He started in 23rd position. Take a look at our serial scoring by MCI on Mark Martin. Back on lap 19 was up to 21st, but take a look since then. 42 laps, he is 14th from 23rd starting spot. And folks, that's not easy to do on a tight half mile like Bristol, Tennessee. Now let's go back to the leader, and you'll find that Jeff Gordon, while Rusty Wallace is trying to get by the traffic, has closed up. He's right on the back bumper, and Morgan Shepard in front of Rusty Wallace. Morgan got very loose there coming off the of turn two. Rusty's going to get a run on going into turn three, but can't quite make the pass then. Now Morgan goes high and allows Rusty to go by. That'll mean only 35 cars are now on the lead lap as oh, 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 oh here. Ricky Rudd has fun. No caution yet. He's down off the racetrack. Okay, let's see. Is he going? He's trying to get moving. Well. Gate metal damage on the left front and left rear of the tide four. Caution is out. And now Dole Ford does wave the yellow flag for the second time today. Let's see what happened to Ricky Rudd. On the inside of Chad Little, Chad Little in the green number 97, Rudd in the orange day glow number 10. And the back end just gets loose on him down there. And yep. around he goes. Fortunately, Benny spins down the inside. Doesn't look like he hits anything. I don't think he did hit anything. He sit there. Hoping that NASCAR would throw the cost. Oh, we see the left front tire block just as he stopped. The left front tire blew. So he, that's why he sat there, Ned. He wanted to get in the pits and change those tires under the caution flag. And he did clip the left side of the wall with the left front and the left rear as he was coming to a halt there. So he has some sheet metal damage on the left front and the left rear as the car was sliding. But it could have been a whole lot worse for Ricky Rudd. Pit stops already, guys. Here they come down pit road. They want to make some adjustments on those cars, those that are not handling too well. 35 miles an hour, no faster, or you'll get a penalty. And let's go down to John Curtin. Terry Labonte, who has moved up into the top 10, jumps in, gets a drink of water. A four tire change is what we did. Just made his tire rolls away. One of the NASCAR officials. The right side's already on. Now they're coming around the left side. Let's go to Rusty Walsh and Ben Bill Weber. No chassis adjustments for Rusty. Four tires in Unical fuel. Same so stock bar for Sterling Merlin. Directly behind them is Ted Musgrave. Right now, Jimmy Spencer beats everybody out. Then it's Rusty. On a near collision, Jeff Gordon and Dale Jarrett trying to leave the pits. It's very, very tight down there. You want to get out in a hurry. Jeff Gordon had to back up to get out of his pits. Hudson Strickland, or the 81 car of Kenny Wallace, pitted right in front of him. They were having some problems, and Jeff had to back up to get out of his pits, so that cost him some extra time. Well, working caution for the second time today. Now the cars that have been lapped, you see those cars peel off down pit road. They cannot pit the first time by only the lead lap cars. Under caution at Bristol Motor Speedway. Back with more short track action after this. Shop Talk coming up next. Team Hendrick, the last two Winston Cup champions. Gordon Labonte has Shop Talk coming up at the conclusion of the Food City 500. He started lap 54, the caution lasting five laps. And Jimmy Spencer is out front. He's had a couple of two tires. Rusty Wallace is second. Spencer goes a little high. Coming off the turn. Joe Nemechek came out in third place. Dale Jarrett in fourth. And Sterling Ball in fifth. That's right, uh, Ned. Spencer did change right side tires. 
meanwhile, right in the battle for third spot is Dale Jerry gets by Nemechek, takes over third. Whoa, trouble out of turn two. Jack Sprague has spun the Budweiser Chevrolet. And the caution flag is waved. That's the third time today. Caution is out. Sprague is looping around, got that out of the groove. No other contact it appears. The car will come down pit road, but Doyle Ford will wave the yellow flag once again. Sprague once again subbing for Ricky Craven. They change the right side. Let's see if we can see what happened to Sprague. He goes in the corner and he gets in too high. As the car goes under him in turn one, he gets in too high, gets up in the loose stuff, and around he goes. And he lost a lap sitting there as he's trying to get his car going. He lost a lap and then he went to the pits to change the four tires and lost another lap. Let's watch as he goes down the front straightaway. In turn one, a on the inside. So he goes up. Oh, some contact. Some contact between he and the between him and the 40 car. So that's the reason he went around. And there is Sprague sitting inside the car, the Budweiser in-car camera. And he is being held on pit road. And meanwhile, let's check in the pits up and find out about Ricky Rudd with Ray Dunlap, right? Well, guys, this uh, last caution for Jack Sprague is really kind of a benefit for Ricky Rudd, even though he's behind the wall here. They've lost three or four laps already. The big problem is they're not able to put any fuel in the race car. You see they're working back there on the fuel filler. They're worried that if they were to go back out, they might run out of gas. So they've got to correct that problem before they go out. And the report is the 42 car, the Bell South Chevy of Joe Nemechek may have a right rear tire going down. We'll check on that. There's the right rear tire. And take a look at the attendance over the years as you look at that car. 1961, the very first race here, the Southeastern 500, 25,000 folks were here. Over the years, it has gotten bigger and bigger, but what a jump since 1996, 118,000 here today. Back with more after this. Back to green flag racing, lap 119. That caution for eight laps, and Rusty Wallace, right where he's been for most of the afternoon, pulling away from the rest of the field. Well, I tell you what, Rusty Wallace is just able to stay right on that yellow line around the corners and accelerate off the corners. Walking through the garage here this morning, that's what everyone was talking about. The front, the crew, the drivers, whether they're just admiring how well Rusty Wallace's car is getting around this racetrack. There's a battle for second place, uh, Jared and Gordon, sorry, dude. Certainly over the years, his record has proven how good he is on short tracks. And uh, just proving again here today. And we see Kyle Petty in the 44 car. These are fifth place cars. He tries to close in on the back of Jimmy Spencer. Heard his name mentioned a couple of times as a car that was really good. Kyle Petty. Well, how about it? Uh, what about Kyle Petty, John Curtin? Jerry, I was just talking to the crew, and they said that uh, the car was running really well. They're really pleased. The adjustment they made on their first pit stop was an air pressure change because the car was a little bit tight. They wanted to loosen it up. So I asked Bobby Kennedy uh, during that last caution. Now he's getting by Jimmy Spencer as we come down the front straightaway, and the sun has also come out, so the temperature's warming up a little bit. But they said, you know, we really don't know if that adjustment did the right thing because we haven't got to run enough laps under green. But right now it's looking pretty good for him. Guys, he has one top 10 in 1997. Talking about Kyle Petty, that was in Richmond. He finished 10th. Battle for six spot between Sterling Marlin, the four car, the seven of Jeff Bodine, and Steve Grissom back there in the 41 car. Steve having a good run here today. And Jeff Gordon on the inside of Jared, and he takes that spot away. Now, this sun coming out, Vinny, that. Uh, May not make as much difference on the ass on the concrete here as it would if it were asphalt, but it makes some difference. It, will make, it certainly will make some difference. Now, whose car is going? Look at Gordon going high in the corners. Still sort of using that Jimmy Spencer line, drifting up a little bit in the center of the corner. Jeff Gordon trying to close in on Jeff Burton, the car 99. Last week's winner is a lap down. There's the guy they're chasing, Rusty Wallace. He's got a full straightaway separation between him and the second place car. Marlin still continues to lead that group. Bodine, Grissom, Labonte, Terry Labonte, 
And Bobby Hamilton, the 43 car, is in fact a lap down. And here's some trouble up in turn four. Uh, no caution. Some heavy damage to the 25 car of Jack Sprague. The Budweiser car has heavy damage to the right front, and he's slow right in front of the leaders. And Jeff Gordon barely able to get by. Jeff Gordon has just basically stopped. And Jeff Burton did take the 25 car just a little bit when he went by from the inside. Caution is out now. Well, Jeff Burton was trying to be able to get back there and race Rusty Wallace back to get his lap back, but there's the damage, as Benny said, the heavy damage on the car number 25 of Jack Spray. Now, will we see them pit this time? How long have they been out there on those tires? Well, they pitted on lap 49. They had the only time all the leaders have been on pit road. We were at lap so 132. Been, been out there about 81 laps now, so be interesting to see if they come in or not. So the pace car, let's see if we can see a replay. It's between the 31 and the 25. Banging and banging. I don't think I don't guess they ever hit anything other than each other, but a lot of damage to these cars. Now watch him. Watch as the nine car goes by. Here goes Rusty Wallace. Now here goes the and he does Ned clip him as he goes by. And you haven't seen Jeff Gordon yet because he all but stopped. He had not gone by yet. Budweiser rear camera. Now Andy Graves and the crew will try to work on that car as he's come to rest on pit road. I guess that he and the 31 car made contact going in the corner, just couldn't get off each other. Pit road has now been opened, and here come the cars. Well, let's go down to Bill Weber for leaders pit stop. Rusty Wallace has the number one pit stall all the way at pit out toward turn one. This will be four tires, fuel, and they will drop the track bar a quarter inch on Rusty's car. As you look at the triple pitch, the car's on pit road. Now watch for these guys leaving. A lot of guys, like Kenny Wallace for one, had trouble getting out of their pit last time. The four and the 16 cars are pitted directly behind Rusty. They both want to put a rubber in the left rear. Wallace has his four tires and fuel, and he's gone. The 18.8 seconds, 19.7 for Gordon, 20 seconds for Dale Jarrett. Ray Dunlap with Dale Earnhardt on the backstretch. Well, what we talked about at the top of the show, what a disadvantage it is to be here on the backstretch. Dale Earnhardt's good wrench crew puts four tires and gas in his Chevrolet. They're down and ready to get the and get away. Out of the 72 races they've run here, only one of them has ever been won from back here. John Kernan. Kyle Petty and Terry Levani both were in for four tire change. Both of them had just a little bit of extra time. Uh, Kyle's crew did not make any chassis adjustments, neither did Terry's, but they did make an air pressure adjustment. And also Levani's had a uh, lug nut fall off the left rear tire. And Ted Musgrave coming back in. Levani uh, had some problems on the left rear tire, so that slowed his pit stop down just a little bit. Let's go to Bill Weber. Now they come in to change the left side tires, and actually the purpose of this stop is to put the rubber in the left rear of Ted Musgrave's car. We've talked almost since that first caution period how loose Ted has been. They've got the rubber in, now they'll tighten the left rear. They're gonna push it away and he returns to the track. They could not make that stop, obviously, under green, and it took them two stops to get it done here under caution. Okay, let's see if we can decipher what happened to bring this caution flag out. Well, we see we're riding along with Mike Skinner. Looks like he might have gotten into the 75 car of Rick Mass. That's right. He hit the 75 car of Rick Mass. When he did that, he backed off the gas. And when he did that, the spray, the 25 car come along, hit him. You're right, Ned. For those of you scoring at home, that is... Uh, Lowe's to Remington to Budweiser. That was the contact pattern for caution flag number eight. Back with more from Bristol in a moment. Okay. Back at Bristol Motor Speedway, working the eighth caution flag today. Well, 
one guy who pitted back on lap 99 found this caution flag to his locking because he is being shown as our leader. There he is, the McDonald's Ford driver for Bill Elliott. So he didn't stop this time. Hasn't been but about uh, 36, 37 laps since he came into the pits. John Kernan. Lap 98 and 99, Elliott pitted twice. He got two tires each time. They've made some adjustments on the car. And under right before this last caution came out, Bill told Mike Bean, he said, hey, this car is really hooked up. In fact, this morning when I was talking to Bill, he says, hey, I could have probably a day like I had back in 1988. He won in the spring race. Remember, he spun around and came back to win. Then he ran second, I believe, to Dale Earnhardt in the night race. And Bill said the car actually ran better in that night race in 1988. And he thinks that he might have a shot at winning today but as we've seen rusty wallace has been stout they made a track bar adjustment you see what rusty is i mean i can't imagine he can be any faster than he already was there's robin pemberton the crew chief on the two car talking to his driver the pace cars off here the cars come green flag is out robert Preston is the second place car the cartoon network car morgan shepherd is third rusty wallace fourth and bobby labani is fifth now, Robert Preston had also stopped on lap 99, so. And Hutt Strickland, he's a lap down, stopped on one of the caution flags, trying to cure some kind of problem, lost a lap, trying to get it back. And Ed Barrier in the 95 tries to go by Preston on the outside. Meanwhile, Jeff Burton, the 99 car, trying to get to the front. Feels like this is his best chance to get up and get a lap back. There's the 99 car. Made an unscheduled pit stop. Came out in front of him. Here's Rusty Wallace at car number two. Coming in a hurry. You see Rusty moving in on the 99. They just passed Morgan Shepard. And Morgan Shepard's another one of those drivers who started at the rear of the pack and was up there in this. It still is in the lead pack, but he didn't make a pit stop on this caution either. But Morgan had himself some good track position. Ooh, Brett Bodine goes on the They're inside clear. of Steve Grissom. Here comes Kyle Petty. Boy, away, get down. That is the 12th and 13th. Right on an 11th spot in a great qualifying effort. Qualified 12th. Grissom is in 12th spot right now. 11th, 12th, and 13th on the screen. Here's Ronnie behind this group. Had all kind of problems. Barely got the car on the line before the start of the race, about 10 minutes beforehand. Changed all the brakes this morning, all the calipers on the line. Also, found an engine bed they had to change. Oh, dives on the inside of Kyle Petty, trying to take the spot away, and will. Be clear. Kyle quickly tries to get to the bottom of the racetrack because the 81 car, the square D car, Kenny Wallace, has been very, very good all weekend. Kenny Wallace's best qualifying spot of the year, starting fourth here, right on the rear of Kyle Petty's Hot Wheels Pontiac. Oh, spin in turn three. It's Dave Marcus, the 30 car. Benson goes around. And here's Jeff Clark trying to get his left back. Let's see if he's going to do it this time. You have to Good slow job, down man. because the 30 car was up in the track, and Bill Elliott will be working back once again. So denied that opportunity one more time. Both Burton and Strickland were trying to get their laps back, and boy, Marcus just came down off the banking. So did the car number 30 of Johnny Benson. There's a Dave Marcus Realtree car right in front of the leaders, and they were able to had to slow up and then speed back up to keep those cars a lap down. And we see some damage to the right rear, and the, and the rear has got into the fence, and he backed in with the left rear. So evidently, this right rear problem happened somewhere back in the corner, and Benson just turns the car left to avoid Marcus. Well, he did a good job of avoiding Marcus there. Spins him around, and fortunately, he uh, keeps from getting hit hard, at least, from any other car. And look at Benson. Now, he is behind the wall. It looked like a simple spin out, but he is behind the wall. What in the world is going on? Ken's old crew now going to work on Johnny Benson's Pontiac. Looked like, as you said, but he just turned the car and missed him. Ray Dunlap, what's the problem with the 30 car? Well, Jerry, as they were coming down the backstretch off of turn number two, actually Johnny Benson made a bit of contact with Dave Marcus, and then Benson backed out of the throttle to let Marcus get it straightened out, and he just couldn't. Okay. So that's the damage to the left front is where he made contact with Marcus, I guess. 
And here's the car number 71, the real tree Chevrolet with some significant rear end damage. That's Dave Marcus. And that's the reason for caution number nine at Bristol, Tennessee. We'll be right back. Our speed road coverage of the 37th running of the NASCAR Winston Cup Food City 500 from Thunder Valley. Bristol Motor Speedway is brought to you by Penzoil. Formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Penzoil. By Firestone, America's Tire since 1900. By MasterCard, MasterCard, the official card of NASCAR. And by Daytona USA, the ultimate motorsports attraction. Hey, all you drag racing enthusiasts, take a track side seat to the NHRA Pins Oil Nationals coming up Sunday, April 27th, live all day on pay-per-view, $14.95. Call your cable operator or satellite provider to subscribe. NHRA Pins Oil Nationals coming up April 27th. And to update the Pins Oil Pontiac, let's check in once again with Ray Dunlap. Well, Jerry, it appears that all the sheet metal damage was on the right side of the race car. Benson got up into that outside wall, but it doesn't appear there was any suspension damage at all. There is a great deal of damage, however, to the Budweiser Chevrolet down here. Uh, it, it is a mess. Jack Fred Sprague is still setting in the car. They're hoping to get him back in there and get some valuable laps here, but I would say it's going to take him quite a while. He's being shown in 40th position right now already many laps down and this is going to put in many more laps down. Talk about sorry, go ahead. Well that's exactly what you were going to say Benny talk about walking softly here and carry a big hammer exactly what Bill Weber we us, us talked about at the top of the show and what Bristol was all about. Okay here we go once again Bill Elliott leads the down to the green play. Still not able to get past it. Now here you go. Great run for Burton. Still can't get the position on Bill Elliott. Now he's got position. Got him a run now going into the turn. He should get it. Got the inside groove. Now Burton is back on the lead. There's 29 cars now on the lead lap. Burton running in 29th position. Bobby Labonte just changed two tires at the last pit stop. Gets by Morgan Shepard. Oh, Elliott goes high. Big Bobby. scramble down in turn two. The 99 car slowed abruptly. That was Jeff Burton right in front of Elliott and Presley. And now here comes Burton on the pit road. He just got his lap back and suddenly the car slowed abruptly down in turns one and two. And we, see, we saw the damage to the rear of that car. It looked like most of it was the eight car. And there's our leader, Robert Presley. How about that? He's had such a tough year this year, and it's good to see him out front. Robert qualified 15th is our leader. Let's check in with Bill Weber. Well, these guys are disappointed. The hood is up, and uh, the eight car swings by on the outside, but he's got left side damage to the left rear and to the left front. The 29 cars also coming into the pits now, but they're under the hood, looking under the hood of Jeff Burton's car. Down to you, John, with the 29 pit. I think Robert Presley might have made some contact with Jeff Burton going down into turn number one. He came in the left front tire. So he had to come into pit. He's going to lose the lap. Bill Elliott and Jeff Burton down into turn one. What a bad turn for Robert Presley. That is a tough break, John. It's just typical of the way his year has gone. And Jeff Gordon trying to get by, trying his best to get by. Bill Elliott takes the lead. Gordon has not led the race today, but he has position. He might do it the next time by. Now Gordon's tires some 35 laps fresher than Bill Elliott, so that makes the move pretty simple for Gordon. And Rusty Wallace also slides by. Elliott back in third spot with Dale Jarrett in fourth. Now here's what happened in that incident a moment ago from Rusty Wallace's Miller Light in car. This is the front stretch down in the corner, and all of a sudden, Elliott almost gets sideways, and there's some contact between the 29 and the 8. Wow. And that's why I cut the tire down on, on Robert Presley's car, that contact that was made. Yes, it was. And there we see the eight car running the back of the 99, see the damage to the right front of the eight, and we saw the damage to the rear of the 99 car. And Rusty squeezes by on the inside. 
Ned Jarrett, you said all along that the 24th, we see the 88 car just moved into third spot. Dale Jarrett, you said all along that Jeff Gordon had a good race car. You'd like to see him Rusty Wallace race? We're getting to see that <laughs> now. Got, he's out in front of Rusty. He got by Rusty in, in that little melee off of turn two over there. Let's go to this and John Kearney. He did not cut the tire down. Look at the valve stem. You're supposed to have one here. It's completely broken off. This one here pinched off. The air escapes. The tire goes flat. The inner liner goes flat. That's what happened with Robert Presley. Going down into turn number one, he made some contact with his left front tire, the right rear bumper of Jeff Burton, and that snapped off the valve stem, so he has a flat tire and had to come in and lost a lap, at least one lap in the pits. And as you said, that just when things start going good for Robert Presley, they go bad. That's the kind of year he's had, the kind of luck he's had here in 1997. He's back in 31st position now, one lap down. Now, Rusty Walsh is going higher than I've seen him all day. He's been right on that yellow line as he's leading the race. Now he's drifting up the racetrack a little bit. Well, he might be uh, sort of looking ahead at him at Jeff Gordon. Gordon has been using that line a little bit, and Rusty sees it's working for him. And so maybe he's going to try it, but now he gets back down on the inside. This group right here has been thrashing for position. There's Terry Labonte back in ninth position. We're going to move around a little bit. Morgan Shepard side by side with Ted Musgrave. That's 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. There's the NBA Pontiac. Lord Burton going by, taking a spot away. And Morgan was up there in third place when all the other leaders made the pit stop. He didn't make a pit stop, and that's beginning to show up on those tires. Rick Mask trying to take a look on the inside. The 75 car, he's going to go by. And Bobby Hamilton will go by and be seven as well. Here comes Trickle and Steve. Robert Preston, I'm sorry, Robert Preston, the 29 car. Back up front, there's Jeff Gordon in the car number 24. Back to back, Food City 500 wins. That graphic tells it all. The last four events, his average finish 2.5 here because he's won two in a row here in the spring. Now, what happened to Jeff Burton? Well, why don't we ask him, Bill Weber? Jeff battling to get back on the lead lap. What happened out there? Well, we got a lap down because. Uh, Ignition box of the goal one went bad to begin with. We got it fixed and then we took off and we made some big, pretty big changes to the car. Once we did that, the car was pretty, pretty good. Uh, got by Bill and the car drove real good. Uh, I said, okay, we got everything made. And then it, there was all the hell broke loose. Uh, some broke inside of the motor. I, we had real good engine for luck. You know, we don't have a lot of engine failure. Uh, you hate when you do have one, but we don't have many. We got lucky we didn't get into a wreck, though, because I was shut off in front of 32 people that were coming wide open. And uh, they had me picked up in the back, and I was just hanging on. So it's a short day for the X-side board. We'll go to Martinsville try to make it up. Okay, that's a tough sport. Victory Lane last week, out early this week. And he was fourth in point standings coming in here, so that will definitely hurt him in the points. Dale Earnhardt closes in on the back of Kenny Wallace. He's currently in 15th spot. We're starting at 29th, wasn't it? Yep. Started 29th. As Mark Mark tries to follow him along, there's Kenny Schrader, the 33 car. NASCAR serial presented by MCI shows you Dale Earnhardt was in 19th spot on lap 156. And moved up to 14th spot. Two top ten finishes in the last three outings for Earnhardt. It's starting to come together. They were at eighth in Atlanta, 15th at Darlington, and now sixth at Texas. Mark Martin also gets by the 81 car and does Kenny Schrader. Mark Martin running in the 16th position. He's the next one behind Earnhardt. 95 car Ed Barrier is a lap down to Earnhardt, Martin Martin. Barrier 28. And Grissom goes by Bobby Labonte. I think that two tire, tire change on Bobby Labonte really hurt Benny. He's just not able to keep that car down on the inside. The interstate battery is Pontiac. He's going back. And Ernie Irvin and Brett Bodine battle for position. I bet Ernie he, Irvin started 38 back there, Benny, all the way up in 12th position, right behind the close call forward of Brett Bodine. There's Ernie's progression. 26 spots from the beginning. 
Earnhardt dives on the inside and some contact and around goes Kyle Petty. And caution is out. Boy, Kyle did a great job to get that car. Come on, come on. Without even more damage. That's Dennis Beaver telling him, come on, come on. Yeah, that's that tire is looser. Kyle said that set of tires was looser. Get caught up. Get in here. Get four tires on it. You have to come back around. We're going to work on the back of it, okay? Pass it. Beat down. There's the Earnhardt going in the corner. Kyle Petty comes down. Some contact in the left rear. Kyle goes up. Backs in the fence right there. Mark Martin and Earnhardt drives under him. How'd you like to meet Mark Martin riding along with Mark Martin? Man? <laughs> yeah. He didn't know where to go, but he did make the right move down on the inside. <laughs> Drove on the apron of the racetrack. Maybe, yeah. maybe Mark found him a good groove down there. <laughs> Here we see it again. Kyle comes down, Earnhardt down on the bottom part of the racetrack. They make contact and around Kyle goes. Kyle doesn't look like he hits the, he hits the wall. You can see the dust flying from the cement wall, but maybe not too hard, so maybe it won't do too much damage to him. The wow. car scrambling around as they come by. And he did stay on the lap. Two tires, okay? 10-4, On the right side of the Hot Wheels Pontiac. Well, the leaders are Jeff Gordon almost. He faked them. Jeff Gordon was headed down pit road, and Bill Elliott will come in because he, he had stopped on lap 99. And John Kernan had told you that Elliott had come in twice on laps 98 and 99 for two tire changes both times. Under caution for the 10th time. Back with more from Bristol in a moment. Brought Bristol Motor Speedway, Bristol, Tennessee. Fine folks from the Penzoil Copter Cam giving us this aerial shot of the reason we're under caution here for the 10th time on the high banks here at Thunder Valley. Take a look. Dale Earnhardt, the three car, trying to get alongside Kyle Petty. Some contact. Petty goes up and backs it in the fence ever so slightly. Earnhardt, Mark Martin, and all the other cars able to somehow miss Kyle. What a great job he does here, Ned, and he gets it going straight. Continues on. Keeps right going. Stayed in the lead lap. He's made several pit stops during this caution. Changed all four tires and did a little bit of uh, sheet metal work to the sheet metal damage back there on the right rear. But he's still in. He's back in the pits right now. Uh, John Kearney. And as you can see, they've torn the rear bumper cover off. They're also using bungee cords to keep the rear deck lid in place. And the spoiler has been almost straight up at a 90 degree three. angle. As you hear the spotted telling the pace cars in turn three as we get to signal one lap to go. Yeah, so this should be next time by. the last time for Kyle three four. Pit, So we'll have to see how this right, affects go, go, go. it. And now he's waiting. They drop and they and let him go. Man. And uh, Bobby Kennedy says, four, I man. believe you're OK. Kyle acknowledges that. He beats the pace car out, stays on the lead lap. But with that spoiler straight up and not very much of it in the wind, what kind of handling effect go. is that going to have, guys? It won't be good. No, it'll change it, that's for sure. Kyle is in 26th position. There are four, 26 cars on the lead lap. And he's the last one. Look at Jimmy Spencer, fourth place. Our Napa field summary, Gordon the leader, Wallace, Jarrett, Spencer, and Jeff Bodine in the top five. 16 through 30, we see about 26 cars in the lead lap. Kyle Petty, we talked about him, he's the last car. And 31 through 43, just two cars out of the race. Johnny Benson is off the track. They continue to work on the car, and when they get it fixed, he'll be back. Now, on the last restart, Jeff Gordon pulled away by about five car lengths and stayed there right in front of Rusty Wallace. Rusty couldn't gain it. Gordon couldn't get away. We'll see what happens this time. Gordon got himself a good jump again.
course, this is not trick camera work. That's how much those cars move around, although Jeff Gordon's car that time did not move around a great deal. And here's trouble off turn four. Brent Bodine has spun around. Get back. Caution is out once oh, again. Ken Musgrave on. comes down pit road to avoid it. And Bodine will get the car right and stay on the lead lap. He was being shown in 11th position. And this appropriately, car number 11 in 11th position brings out the 11th caution flag of the day here on lap 197. He had some kind of trouble down in turn one. I, I glanced the car slow off turn two. Took my eye off of it. Let's see. There, I saw the. This is where I took my eyes off of it. The 28 goes in the corner. He comes down, and Brett tried to dodge the 28 car. And when he turned and hit the brake sharply, the car got up under him and spun. Can't wow, that thing it. went around and then just straightened up. Yeah. and kept going. Look at all those cars go by. It's amazing how many single car wrecks we've seen today, and not multi car crashes. This is Mike Skinner's car, and we see the trouble started up in the corner. Well, Mark Skinner's seen a lot in front of him today. There's the face cam from Mike Skinner. And said, man, I've seen too many of these up close and personal today in Bristol, Tennessee. And the Lowe's hardware store is Chevrolet. Kyle Petty is back in the pits, doing more work on the rear of his Pontiac, his Hot Wheels Pontiac, trying to. There we see him. Yeah, that big hammer. Weber, they got that big hammer out you're talking about. <laughs> I told you you would need that here at Bristol. John, what they're trying to do, remember I told you the spoiler was up at about a 90 degree angle. They're trying to bend it back as the pace car comes out of turn number four. And uh, they tried to bend the spoiler back and knock some of the rear deck loot down so some air could hit the rear spoiler so Kyle could drive the car out there because obviously that downforce in the rear, not a lot. Of, uh, of down four, so it was very loose. Jeff Gordon continues to leave the Food City 500. We'll be right back to Thunder Valley in just a moment. Well, the sun's back out in Bristol, and the green flag is about to be. The 11th caution flag today comes to an end, and Jeff Gordon pulls away. Well, he got off to another great start on this restart. He got a car on that car. He and Rusty Wallace. And Bobby Hamilton, just the nice fellow he is, moves up and lets Rusty Wallace go in his attempt to catch Jeff Gordon. Spencer had gone high down in the first or second corner like he was trying to pass Dale Jarrett on the outside. Well, he sees uh, those two lap cars that are in front of Jarrett and, and figures that uh, Jarrett's going to stay on the inside, which he probably is. And he thought, well, this might be a chance for me to pass him. But it didn't quite work out. Really. You mentioned those two lap cars. That's Bobby Hamilton's car 43 and Robert Presley's car number 29. Now, Presley looks to the inside of Hamilton, Jarrett right behind Robert Presley, and Spencer right behind Jarrett. And Jeff Ledine right behind Spencer. Jeff Ledine has a has a different sponsor on his quarter panels today, L.A. West, who has been a longtime associate sponsor on the QDC number seven. So it has uh, given him a little extra exposure today for the L.A. West a band conversion company. Yes, I barred Jeff a couple of times dead, and it's not bad. Heavy traffic. We look at our Napa field summary and look who's right uh, in the middle of it, the number three car. He and Ernie Irvin, three and 28. A little contact that time between the three and the 28 as Earnhardt gets by. Mark Martin will try to follow. And he will follow. And Schrader will try to do the same thing. And he will do the same thing. Ernie got caught up there and he can't get out of there. Can't he? He's got Jeremy Mayfield down there. Well, Earnhardt's in ninth position. You see him in ninth on our scoring pylon left side of the screen there. Mark Martin now in the top ten. If you wonder what's happening up front, folks, Jeff Gordon is driving away from Rusty Wallace right now. There's Gordon and there's Rusty. And what's happening in the pits? Let's go down to John Kernan. 
Well, Kyle Petty lost the left half of the rear spoiler on the car. They're reattaching that right now, so they're losing lap after lap. This is part of the left half of that the rear spoiler. You can see the weld beads in here. They just snapped right off after they had the spoiler been pushed up to a 90-degree angle. Then it was pushed back. Kyle went out there. The air hit it knocked it right off so you can't run with only half a spoiler so Kyle is sitting down in the pits he's lost countless number of laps as the crew is putting on the left half of the rear spoiler oh boy another tough break for another driver that had a good run going here today look at the lead that Jeff Gordon has on Rusty Wallace and what Ned said a moment ago the AutoZone on track interval take a look at the interval how it has grown you see we started at six tenths of a second and then it's 1.2 seconds. And look at Jeff Gordon all this time. 16, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. Rusty, 2, 2, 4, 4, and 5. Bernard's trying to get by the lap traffic there. Huck Stricken, the Circuit City car. Hey, Mark Martin has been able to get by Dale Earnhardt. Martin was taking the eighth spot away. Earnhardt still back in ninth spot. Here's a battle for fourth and fifth. Jimmy Spencer has fourth. Jeff Hodine wants it. Ooh, they'll get close coming off the turn. But Spencer's car, we've talked about it before, he goes pretty high in the turns, and that gives Jeff an opportunity to try to get under him, but couldn't do it that time. And there's Terry Levine. He's just sitting there watching that action. Take a, he'll take advantage of any situation that might occur. Terry says, I'm six, but if you guys keep playing, I'm about to be fourth. Now Spencer runs that middle group. Been running up there most of the day. Yes, he has. It's working for him. He stayed up front. He made a good decision. Travis Carter, the crew, Donnie Wingo made a good decision. Change two tires early on, get some track position. Kyle Petty back on the racetrack. You heard John Kern mention Martin Miller looking at rear spoiler for you Kyle Petty fans. They have gotten the car fixed and he's now back on the racetrack trying to get back up to speed. Kyle lost 18 laps. Hmm. And he had moved all the way up into the top four, having a great run in that Hot Wheels Pontiac. And you, you look at that and you say, why did they weld it? Why didn't they just bend a piece of aluminum, aluminum and not weld it? Because the deck lid on the Pontiac is not level across. It has ups and downs, so they have to weld the rear spoiler. Sterling Marlin chasing Kenny Wallace. Both of those drivers having good runs here today. Kenny Wallace in the square D Ford number 81. Sterling Marlin in the Kodak and Chevrolet number four. They are 13th and 14th then. Start on the outside pole did the four car. Here comes Ted Musgrave. Got, he started third. He's trying to get by Jeremy Mayfield in the 37. And there's Dick Triple. And Michael Walter. As he closes in right on and some contact between the 16 and the 37. Musgrave goes on. Trickle tries to fall. Here comes Bill Elliott. Jeremy's and Michael's group, so it's be a trouble. Speaking of Michael Walter, he started 39th, now being shown in 21st spot. He's gained 18 positions. He makes a move now. And Jeff Levine is finally got up the side of Spencer. Here they are going down into turn one. The Spencer still running that high line. Gets a good run coming off the turns. And Jeff just simply hadn't been able to muster it up in trouble. Crash 81 cars back to the fence and once again Doyle Ford's going to have to have going to have to have a lot of limit on that elbow this week because he is waving that caution flag once again for the 12th time 14th place car contact with the wall three and four. That's a tough break for Kenny Wallace. He's had some good runs this year better runs than his finishing position show. Of course he qualified in fourth position here for the Food City 500 now has to take it behind the wall. And starting spot of the year for Kenny Wallace. The youngest of the three Wallace brothers. He takes the Phil Martossi car behind the wall. How tough is it for to run on the short track? So we've had 12 caution flags a day. The all time NASCAR Winston Cup record for the number of cautions was 20. Where? Well, you guessed it right here at Bristol, Tennessee in the spring of 1989. Folks, we could have a record before it's over. Back in a moment.
back at Bristol Motor Speedway working caution flag number 12. Why are we under caution? Well, we'll show you what happened to Kenny Wallace's car number 81. Goes in the corner, don't know exactly what happened, goes up, makes some contact, serious contact with the car, comes off the racetrack directly to pit road. NASCAR wisely threw the caution flag. While we were in commercial, some cars made some pit stops. As a matter of fact, the leaders, Jeff Gordon made pit stops, Rusty Wallace and Dale Jarrett, Ned. Dale Jarrett, uh, we'll see, makes a good pit stop, but he's going to kill the engine when he starts out. But Rusty Wallace is going to get out in front of this trio, even though Jeff Gordon goes down off the jack first. But he's back a little bit further back up pit road. And they made a chassis adjustment in the left rear of the 88 car for Dale Jarrett. Car number 90 back down pit road to Holly Myers car report of that car possibly overheating for Dick Truckle. Dick Trickle will check on that and let you know specifically what the problem is. Sterling Marlin didn't make a pit stop here. Bill Elliott, their first and second. Still working. Caution flag number 12 at Bristol Motor Speedway. Record crowd. Biggest in the history of Tennessee for a sporting event. Glad to have you with us. Back with more in a moment. Welcome back to Bristol. Just about to get the green this time by Sterling Marlin. The scored is the leader, but might have a problem. It's in the motor room in the engine compartment, and basically he thought he dropped the cylinder. Now they just say it's a dead spot, which means when you stand on the gas, the car doesn't really go. You can see it there on the restart. And Robin Peppermint has warned Rusty about that problem on the floor. So Sterling with a perhaps a motor problem. Not very quick on that restart, guys. Well, he's about to get run over there on that restart by Bill Elliott. Bill heads up, slowed down before they got to the turn and didn't hit him. Rusty Wallace moving up in a hurry. He got out of the pits first of those who pit him, so he's in third position. Our Miller Light camera showing the back of Bill Elliott's McDonald's for Thunderbird. Elliott in second spot on the car number four. And Bill Elliott tries to dive to the inside of Sterling Marlin. Has position. Here he goes, taking that spot away. That's for the lead. And the Golden Archers go in front. Bill was already going to have to be a good And this is Rusty Wallace trying to take over that second spot. He will. Caution is out. Break for Robert Presley. Robert Presley was out in front of these leaders. And the caution comes out, so that puts him back on the lead lap now. He's on the lead lap. He's going to go all the way around and catch up now. And we are being told it's debris on the racetrack, and there it is. Great camera work, guys. It's off the 29. How appropriate. Well, yeah. Get uh, something come off your race car, and you're out in front of the leaders. Get your lap back. And How'd they do that? One of those cartoon characters yeah. fell off on the track, and they had to put the caution out. Now Robert gets a lap back, so maybe his luck is changing. The Kerry Bechtel own machine of Robert Presley brings out caution number 13 at Bristol Motor Speedway. Awesome Bill showing the way. His 11th place finish last Sunday at Texas, his best. It's a fourth at Daytona Beach in the season opener. Well, count them on both hands and part of one foot. 13 caution flags thus far here in 236 laps at Bristol. flag racing about three laps ago and how quickly things changed. Lap 239, the green came back out of the lap and a half later. Rusty Wallace is leading and pulling away. Yes, he is. He got under Bill Elliott and away he went. There we see Sterling Marlin still continues to work his way towards the rear. He's up leading the race just a moment ago. Now he's back to about 10th spot. Yeah, and they're passing him on the straightaway, so that engine problem that they said he had is very vivid on the racetrack. They're passing him on the straightaway. Contact between the 11 car, Brett Bodine and the four. Here comes Earnhardt. He and Mark Martin have had a race all day long in the six car, Mark in the six. That is 9, 10th, and 11th as Earnhardt makes the move underneath Marlin. Earnhardt, Marlin, and Mark. Makes that 10th, 11th, and 12th there. And look at Mark Martin dive by Earnhardt on the outside. Wow. Good move. Earnhardt 
evidently told him to do that. Yeah. Did not want to hold Mark up. Now let's show you what happened uh, after the restart, how Rusty was able to get around Bill Elliott. Moves up on him in a hurry. Elliott, remember, has older tires than does Rusty. Going into the turn, dips down the inside. Elliott's car goes a little bit high, and Rusty just motors right on by. Difference in the fresh tires and those that have been on the car for a while. And there's the look back from our leader. And Bill Weber's down with Kenny Wallace. Bill. Kenny, a great qualifying run. I know you had a good car. You were looking forward to a strong performance, but it didn't end that way. Yeah, I mean, you know, I qualified for it. That's the start, though. You got to run good the whole race. And uh, I felt like we had a good race going. I got hit, hit in the rear and spun out. Uh, I have to watch the tape to really figure out what happened. But uh, Spotter said I was clear. I come down, but the guy hit me, I guess, square in the rear end. No one make a fool out of myself. I do need to see the tape first, but uh, you know, we can't fix the car, that's the worst part. But uh, we'll go to Martinsville next week. We're pumped up, we're trying to win, and uh, I guess we forced this year a little too hard today. Your brother looks pretty good. Yeah, he's always strong here. He's got a good package, and uh, hopefully uh, he'll, he'll win. We'll see you next week. Thanks. All right, Kenny Wallace having that great qualifying run, and Rusty Wallace's brother will come by and take the halfway mark. 250 laps complete, 250 to go. So Rusty halfway to his second win on the year. And with that bright sun comes over the Bristol Motor Speedway. And I'm sure warming up the 118,000 have congregated here this afternoon to see this Food City 500. And I don't think they're going to go home disappointed, Ned. No, they've seen a lot of action already. We're just halfway through. I want to update. Uh, I said a moment ago that that was uh, Scooby Doo that fell off the car number 29. That was not debris off of the car. That was off the car number 19 that brought that caution flag out. So uh, that did not come off the 29 car. Scooby Doo is still riding along. The shag. Jeff Bodine running in third place. Jimmy Spencer in fourth place. They've been been racing for a long, long time here today. We watched it about 100 laps with the 23 in front, the seven behind, and then we get to see the thing in reverse. Just before that last caution, Jeff Bodine had managed to get around Jimmy Spencer and then beat him out of the pit. So there they are, just reversed, as you say. Steve Grissom, a good run going today for the Kodiak of Chevrolet. Remember, he's won here in Bush racing. In fact, he swept both events here in 1995. And what a run he had in Texas last week. Grissom came from 35th starting spot to finish 10th. And behind him is Bill Elliott, who was leading not too long ago with those older tires. He's slipping back in the field. There he is, the McDonald's Ford number 94. And right behind him is Mark Martin in the car number six. Martin running in the ninth position now. And he gets under Bill Elliott on the back stretch. He'll take that spot away and move into the eighth spot. Oh, we've got three or four cars crash here on the front straightaway. Bobby Labonte is involved. The 31 car once again right in the middle of it. Unfortunately for Mike Skinner. Ward Island and Reddy and Ward Burton all involved as well. Maybe not too heavily, but they, they made some contact. John Andretti has a part of the bumper cover flapping behind his RCA Ford. There it is. He was trying to get stopped, got front and rear end damage. Let's see if we can see what happens. They come off the corner, and we see Musgrave. Oh, I see Ernie and the 18 car. The 28 and the 18 car makes contact. Bobby Lavani goes around. Ernie goes on by. Meanwhile, the cars behind try to start trying to stop. And they make contact, and the 98 car of Andretti comes along, runs in the back of the 18 car. Wow. Boy, I tell you, my skinner's got to say, hey, do I look like a cue ball or what? I mean, <laughs> I'm just minding my business, and suddenly I, people are bouncing off me all over. And Ray Dunlap is right there in the pits. Well, you're absolutely right, guys. There is a lot of damage to the Lowe's number 31. They're continuing to go to the right side. That's where Mike says most of his trouble is. All of the handling problems that they have had, he says he thinks, has to do with the damage they have on the right front. Well, he 
he's in 30th position. He's five laps down because he's been in so many different problems here today, this Mike Skinner. Now I'll take a look at the points up from the rookies here where they're running. Mike Skinner stays running. Robbie Gordon already out of the race, involved in an incident, a couple incidents early on, heavy damage on his car. And David Green now in 29 spots. So Mike Skinner wanting to stay on the racetrack. That's a 96 car, and it doesn't look too bad. The Caterpillar car looks like he's doing pretty well. Sterling Marlin, Bill Elliott, Bobby Labate, Morgan Shepard all making pit stops here. Let's check with Bill Weber. Okay, Sterling Marlin is here, and uh, Bill Elliott also coming out of pit road now. But Tim Brewer just told me when Sterling gets in the gas, the Kodak Chevy just does not go. And uh, obviously, they're only going to change two tires there. Thought about four, but it's a two tire stop for Sterling. But uh, he doesn't have any get up and go when it's time to get up and go. Remember, he and Elliott were off sequence as far as the others are concerned on pit stops. They oh. still are. Bat run over the mass bat run over the NASCAR official did Michael as he was trying to leave the official stepped in front of the car and Michael was going and you think he wanted to get out of the way. All right, let's show you some replays from some of the cameras we had mounted on the Lowe's Chevrolet of Mike Skinner. Tried to accelerate and discovered he had a flat tire and the car would barely roll. This is one of the few cameras we still have working on this car number 31. It might keep this one in place. That one's awful close to you. Back with more from Bristol in a moment. Stay with us. Oh, the green flag wave lap 265. Rusty pulls away with Gordon and company in close pursuit. Third place car is Jeff Bodine, the seventh. Fourth is Jimmy Spencer, the 23. Dale Jarrett, the 88 car, is fourth, and Terry Labonte is fifth. Two cars, Ward Burton, involved in that crash and spent some time in the pits. Yeah, he went a lap down. problems earlier he is 18 laps down he's been running good he's been running almost as fast as the leaders in the tie four you see him right there in the middle of that pack that uh, he lost all his left behind the wall here comes Mark Martin he's moving in in eighth spot Mark started way back at 23rd position if you missed our qualifying show on Friday he had problems with the power steering he's had electrical problems and He's had some damage on the front of that car from an earlier incident. Yes, he ran in the back of his teammate, Jeff Burton. We see the hood all bowed up in the center. It doesn't seem to be bothering the Bobbling Ford one, none whatsoever. Hey, Mark Martin's done it about all. I mean, he has run so well here at Bristol over the years. Four consecutive poles in the high banks of Bristol, Tennessee. In 40 races since his last NASCAR Western Cup win, 15 top fives, 27 top tens, 21 races led, 10 Bush Series wins, yet he has not gone to victory lane since October of 1995 at Charlotte. And Ernie Irvin has slowed dramatically coming down the front straightaway. We understood that it had a little smoke coming from Havlin Ford there. You saw some. He's headed to the pit, so Ernie Irvin's 1997 bad luck continues. from 38 spot many Ernie Irvin started 38th was being shown in the top 10 and now they open the hood on the Havlin Ford Thunderbird. And Rusty Wallace continues to lead. You know he and Jeff Gordon. He pull, he's pulling away from Jeff Gordon with Jeff Gordon was in front of the away from Rusty Wallace who still has not had Rusty or Jeff pass each other. That's what I want to see. Except for one time in a in a traffic situation that Gordon got by Rusty Wallace, but that was in a jam with traffic situation. It's not flat out racing. Our Budweiser race recap. Our leader is Rusty Wallace, has led 
133 of 273 laps. There have been nine lead changes, 14 caution flags. I said 14 caution flags. You're right. That's exactly right. 14 for 81 laps. The average speed, 72.582 miles an hour. Our leaders today, Rusty Wallace, Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Spencer, Bill Elliott, Sterling Marlin, and Robert Presley has led a couple of laps. Out of race thus far, Robbie Gordon, Jeff Burton, and Kenny Wallace. And right now, it looks like Dale Jarrett is uh, off the handle. has gone away a little bit, man. Yeah, he's, uh, he's fighting to stay up there. He's running in fifth place right now. You see Bill Elliott, he can close in on the back bumper of Dick Triple. That's 17th. Uh, Dick Triple, 16th. Coming 17th. They made pit stops on the last uh, caution. You see a little damage to the front end of Dick Triple's car there, too. How it hires forward. He jammed in somebody when somebody braked in front of him. And the car spinning right behind that group. That is Robert Presley as the field now shuffles by and caution once again being waved. And Bobby Labonte is sitting sideways on the back stretch there as well. Boy, Bobby hit it a ton over there. The Interstate Batteries Pontiac. Heavy right side damage. A right front of that car shoved back in. So we can see what happened to Bobby as the cars try to get woed down here in this caution flag. Man, some heavy, heavy damage to the car. That car. We okay, were heavy. watching these cars mid. Right. Trickle in the 90. Bill Elliott in the 94. And right behind them, it looked like Bobby Labonte and was it Robert Presley got together a little bit. And you can see how hard Bobby Labonte went up and hit the outside wall. Ooh, this is going to be a big blow for him. He was third in the Winston Cup point standings coming in here. Well, just 41 points behind his brother Terry. Here we go. Here we got a better angle as he goes in, gets in the back of the 29, gets him sideways, and when he comes off, evidently he ran in the ran in the apron or something, and all of a sudden his car just veered to the right. Take a look at the Sitco uh, view here from Michael Waltrip's in-car camera. He's running right behind Bobby Labonte. And there you see that contact made. Michael gets by. And, and all at once, Bobby just, was it overcorrecting Benny? Or? I think maybe that he hit the 29 with the right front tire and cut the tire oh, down. Okay. Just instantly cut the tire down. Maybe. Okay, good point. Well, John Curtis standing by and Robert Presley pit. Advantage doesn't look too severe. Left front fender, if Robert has to go, because I guess the pace car is uh, making its way, but I don't see it coming out of turn four, but he took off. They're going to have to come back in. They changed right side tires that time, but the left front fender, part of it is uh, down in the lower part. Is a hole has been punched into it, plus they're going to have to pull it away from the tire to keep it from rubbing, so we'll see Robert back on in a moment. Let's go to the backstretch pits and Ray Dunlap. Well, thank you, John. You can see Robert Yates is working feverishly here on the Texaco Haviland Ford. If you look at the very front left side of the race car, something has punctured through the grill and gone in and busted the radiator. So they're putting a new radiator in. They're adding water right now. They figure it's going to be another five or six laps before they can get Ernie back in the race. Well, even if you dodge race cars, debris can get you here at Bristol. Robert Presley back in. There's that big hammer Weber was talking about. A moment ago, when we saw that replay from Michael Walker's car, it looked like I might have seen just a puff of smoke. Let's see if we can see just a puff of smoke as Bobby Labonte goes by the 29 car. There we see the 29 car spin. Now, Labonte goes by right there. I think that he touched the left front fender with his right front tire and instantly cut it. And when he comes off the corner, straight in the wall. Well, let's find out exactly from the horse's mouth. Bill Weber standing by with Bobby Labonte. It's a very disappointed Bobby Labonte. Had a great car high up in points. First of all, what happened out there, Bobby? Uh, actually, I just spun the 20 car, 29 car out going into one. I'm trying to get by him a couple times, and I could never do it. So I got up there and uh, just tapped him a little bit. He got turned around, and I caught his left front with my right front. You okay? Yeah. All right, that's Bobby Labonte. And we talked about all those tools at the top of this race. Well, they're going to need them all to try and get Bobby back out there and get some of those valuable points. As Ned was mentioning earlier, Bobby very high in the point standings and now very disappointed. Great call on that, Benny. That contact to the right front and left front. Bobby Labonte very honest about what happened, but not real happy about sitting behind the wall. Back with more from Bristol in a moment.
Motion flag number 15 about to end. As the crowd on their feet once again, lap 287. This caution for six laps, and Rusty leads him down to the green. And as he had done before, good start. Yep, Norton got a good restart that time. In second place. Heavy in the outside retaining wall. Down and hits the inside retaining wall. And Caution is out for the 16th time. Boy, his car has no steering. Comes right back up across into the concrete, right in the middle of the groove. Dave Marcus goes around him. Cars trying to get their laps back. Ward Burton trying to race. Rusty Wallace back in there is what's left of the Prime Star Family Channel 4. And I tell you what, seeing his hand go up and start turning the ignition, the key, the switches off, is a good sign as he lets the wind in that down. Folks, you were able to see that on our speed shot as the car veered suddenly in the outside retain wall on two wheels. Looked like he was going to flip down the front straightaway. What a tough break for Ted Musgrave. Qualified third. See, the left front tire is flat. I guess he did that when he hit the inside retaining wall. Phew. Wild ride. And once again, the caution flag is out. And we are being told that he may have cut a tire. Let's see if we can see there he just all of a sudden veers in the outside retaining wall and he's going to go down and touch the inside wall. There we go. Now watch you can really see it from the speed shot. Watch the top of your screen. All of a sudden it just veered. Now watch this thing on two wheels. Look like he's going to flip. No control right down to the inside retaining wall. He ran hit it hard. Boy, trying to come back from that 35th place finish at Texas had a great qualifying run today starting in row two and now it's all over for Ted Musgrave. Let's go down the bill. And Ted is walking on his own coming back from the car and we'll see a member of his crew here. You okay? Yeah. Looking for his jacket. It's pretty chilly down here. Well, that was a wild ride. Do you know what happened? Damn lap cars again, you know, coming off turn four. They just drill me in the left rear and put me up in the wall. And, you know, you, these, these lap cars are just absolutely terrible today. You know, the Family Channel Prime Star car was real good. It was just barring our time, but they're just not using their heads today. Okay, that's Ted Musgrave. He manages a smile, but very disappointed. Well, it'll be third DNF of the year after some great runs. Musgrave had that outstanding effort at Darlington. Finished second to Dale Jarrett down there and had a good car today, but it's going to go away now. And he was 15th in the point standings coming in here and, uh, you know, had a good shot to move up even in the top 10 with a good finish here today, but unfortunately he'll drop the other way now. All right, working caution number 16, closing in on that all time NASCAR record of 20. We don't want the record, but it's coming our way. Back in a moment. Back in Bristol, Tennessee, the sun is out. Some shadows on the racetrack. Now, a couple of cautions ago. Actually, caution number 15, the car number 29 was involved. He was tagged, as you heard Bobby Labonte tell Bill Weber. Now, this car was spun, but he's trying to stay in the lead lap. So watch Rusty Wallace. Yes, Rusty's going through one and two. Comes off the back stretch. Now, the 29 car has spun. He's continuing on. There we see the 18 car sitting there. But all of a sudden they tell Robert Preston, look, you're racing these guys. The leader is coming and you're racing him back to the line. There we see him on the bottom of the racetrack. Here, here's a 29 car on the very bottom of the racetrack. Now as we progress on, he drives up on the racetrack in front of the leader to come down to the line and the 29 car will stay on the lead lap. There is how much he beat the leader, Rusty Wallace, back to the line. Good move. Very right. good move. All right, our driver's snapshot on Robert Presley. He's led two laps today, started 15th, currently 20th. He was our leader on lap 159. He was back as far as 34th on lap 53. There are 21 cars on the lead lap, pardon me, Benny, and he is currently in 20th spot. So that guy on the left rear quarter, our producer has young children. I bet you can tell Sue that fellow. That's Scooby-Doo on the hood. Well, I knew that. I mean, that. 
Shaggy on the rear quarter panel. I know his son watches it. My daughter Jessica watches that. So I knew you guys were kids to know that. <laughs> Who is that now, Jerry? Velma, I believe. But let's Velma. Velma. Okay. Yeah, Velma, not Delma. Delma <laughs> Cow. It's a race car. That's Velma. All right, and Ray is caught up with Jack Roush. Well, guys, last week in Texas, Jack Roush had two cars out of the race in Texas, and you won the race. This week, you have two out here. Can Mark win it? Well, Mark is really good. You know, he hasn't asked for any change in the car the whole race. We had a bad starting spot. He's just been working his way up. We think we can go further. The car looks pretty good out there. Yeah, no, we think it's as good as anybody's out there right now. Meanwhile, the leaders have decided to come in the pits. Rusty Wallace going around changing four tires. Bill Weber. Four tires, fuel, and a rubber out of the right rear. Rusty waiting, waiting on the left rear. Just to beat him out. Here comes Jarrett, then Labonte, followed by the 23 car. Let's go to Ray Dunlap in the back pits. Well, guys, Jack Rouse said the car is good. Mark likes it. They've made no chassis changes here. Just four tires and gasoline, and he'll be back out. He beats out Bernard and Jeremy Mayfield. Remember, Mark Martin started back in 23rd spot. He's being shown in eighth position prior to that pit stop. I believe he's going to be about ninth after, after this, uh, or maybe even tenth. Or maybe a little more than that, because there, there's some cars out of sequence. Bill Elliott's out of sequence and a couple of others. So we'll see how it all shakes out here. Mark Martin having trouble blending in without a turn signal. Ordinarily, if you're leaving the mall, you just flip your signal on and slide up in traffic here with no signal, and traffic is pretty bad. Back with more from Bristol in a moment. Facts are brought to you by Quaker State Motor Oil for a clean running engine. Okay, pretty chilly here today at Bristol. So you want to keep all your equipment as warm as you possibly can. This is the air gun that Bill Wilburn is using to change the front tires on Rusty Wallace's car. Normally these sit on the wall during pit, during the race, but today it's back here next to this generator, which is producing heat. And the reason is because when it gets cold, this directional button has a tendency to become very hard to push. That's what controls which way the ratchet goes. You push it in, it'll go the other way. So they want to keep this gun as warm as possible so this button doesn't freeze up during pit stops. Now, one follow-up to our track back from Darlington. We showed you the air guns from the five bunch and about how they change theirs out about every two races or every 20 pit stops. Well, this is the anvil from one of those wrenches. And as you can see right here, it broke two days after we did that last track fact when the team was doing pit practice at the Hendrick Motorsports shops in Charlotte. This is the anvil here. When, the, when you put the lug nuts on, it goes one way. When you put it on, take them off, it reverses itself. You can see the wear in here, but this is how when you see broken air guns during pit stops, this is usually where they break. This one broke during practice. You never lose a lap during practice. Boy, I tell you, you gotta love race fans. It is, it is uh, cold here. I won't say it's chilly, it is cold. The wind chill, the sun has come in and out, but the wind chill, with the uh, with the wind blowing and that's one of the reasons Bill Weber was able to show us that they were keeping those guns warm with the generators that the exhaust was there in the generator coming out heating the gun right what Ray done that well, well guys there's a very heated conversation going on down here with the NASCAR official Steve Mule and Jack Roush what they're saying is like I called on the pit stop that Martin beat out Mayfield and Earnhardt and that's not the way they're lined up on the racetrack so we'll they're going to go back and look at it but they're saying that Mayfield beat the six car out of the pit area, and I don't believe that's the case. Well, Chip Warner, the NASCAR official, talking to Steve Mill and Jack Roush, and he'll relay their sentiments to the NASCAR tower. There's Chip holding the stop sign. Steve Mill just walking back toward our camera, checking with his pit guy, Jack Roush, who holds the car. Every position is so important. We've talked all day about track position and just you know one position means a lot. There we see Brian Dehart talking to Steve Neal and Jack Roush. And Brian is talking to the tower. 
and they're discussing position number 14 on the racetrack. Meanwhile, there's Chip Warren that we talked about just a moment ago, the guy with the stop and go paddle. I was watching a replay of the 1979 Daytona 500 the other day. He was the flagman for that race. In 79. In 79. Yeah. Well, while they get that sorted out, safety car has the field in tow. Yeah, they've thrown the. They've uh, not. They're not going to start. We see the lights back on in the pace car. And Doyle Ford waving that yellow flag, telling the crews we will not go back to green. So we'll take a break and come back with a green flag in a moment. Go back to green lap 306 this time and caution flag number 16. Right now, 94 car Bill Elliott is the leader. Chad Little in the 97, the John Deere car Pontiac is running in second. 75, Rick Mast is third. Now there are five cars that didn't make a pit stop, and the car number 22 of Ward Burton stayed out front. He's back in the lead lap now. He didn't make a pit stop. That's a, the rear shot out of the back of the Miller Light Ford of Rusty Wallace looking back at Dale Garrett. They are mired back in heavy traffic back in seventh and eighth spot. They came out of the pit. Jeff Gordon of those that pitted, he came out first. Rusty Wallace was second, Dale Jarrett third. But there were five cars that did not make pit stops, so that put them back sixth, seventh, and eighth position. See, Terry Labonte is right there behind Jimmy Spencer, and Jeff Bodine is right there as well. Steve Five Grissom. cars in there. Yeah, you mentioned Steve Grissom. He's right there with them. And Brett Bodine is not far behind him either. Brett had some problems earlier, but he's, uh, he's still right up there fighting. There's a map of field summary. You can see where your favorite driver is running on Prince who's on the right is where the car started. Jimmy Spencer running nine started 10. Oh trouble here. 25 and nine late speed and Jack Sprague caution number 17. And all those cars now are going to get a lap back. John Andretti Spence coming off the of turn four probably got bumped when he slowed down. So the 22 the 43 the 95 and the 10 all get a lap back. So those four cars Benny just mentioned get their laps back and Jack Sprague gets a heavily damaged race car the Budweiser Chevy making trying to make its way to pit road. Of course the 10 and the 44 were many laps down but they got one of their laps back. And Ward Burton got his lap back as did the car number 95 of Ed Barrier. And I tell you what you got to feel sorry for the crew in this 25 car because they have had really had some tough luck about five or six times this year they've torn up cars I think the last three races heavy damage to the car. Tough, tough situation for the crew on this car. Now they're pushing the car behind the wall, trying to get get out of harm's way. This is not the Budweiser crew. This is actually the 37 crew of Jeremy Mayfield. There we see Lake Speed. Ooh, that hurts. Some contact between Sprague and Speed and Lake Speed as they came off the corner. Well, you can almost feel that when he hit that concrete. Jack Sprague climbing out of the Budweiser Chevrolet, the Spring Lake, Michigan driver. That contact brings out caution flag number 17. Back with more from Thunder Valley in a moment. Speed road coverage of the 37th running of the NASCAR Winston Cup Food City 500 from Thunder Valley. Bristol Motor Speedway is being brought to you by AC Delco Automotive Parts. AC Delco is like buying time. And by smooth bush beer and easy drinking bush light. The official beer of NASCAR. On the night, 8 o'clock Eastern time, you can join Kenny Mayne, RPM tonight. Pick up the Formula One highlights of Argentina, NHRA, Fram National highlights, and a complete cart wrap up from the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. And if you want online information, how about NASCAR online? www.nascar.com. 
complete features including information on all 12 of NASCAR's touring divisions. Now Ray Dunlap was caught up with Jack Sprague, right? Well, well, guys, you can see by looking at the front end of the Budweiser Chevrolet, they're definitely done for the day. Jack, your third Winston Cup start here, I know it's a big disappointment. You hit a lot of things out there today. What a day. It was probably the worst day I've had in a couple of years, but uh, it was pretty tight at first, but uh, Andy kept working on it, and the Budweiser Chevrolet got pretty good when we were behind. We caught up to that group of 10 or 12 cars there, and, and it was best it'd been all day, and then Skinner went into three on the apron and it got uh, wigged out of shape up there and came down and knocked the body off and bent the front end up. And then it was pretty much riding around for the rest of the day, but this team's had a lot of bad breaks and they got another one. I feel bad for Budweiser and everybody on the race team. Tell me real quickly the difference of running here at Bristol in a truck race to the Winston Cup race. Everything happens a little bit faster. Oh, he's disappointed, guys. They're out for the day. You see him shaking his head. Boy, what a tough day for Jack Sprague and the Budweiser crew, Rick Hendry. Now, that caution came out. Let's watch here as Rusty Wallace comes up on Daryl Waltrip and look at him. He almost gets sideways there as he come up a little bit in a hurry. The caution flag was coming up. And behind this then, we mentioned that John Andretti had spun out, and there he is. Don't know if he got a tap from the rear. Dale Earnhardt was the next car behind him there. But anyway, John Andretti just spun down to the inside. That was after the wreck had already happened on the front straightaway. And there's the cleanup procedure taking place at the end of the front stretch. Safety crews here at Bristol Motor Speedway working hard, and we're working caution number 17, three away from a record. Waves at Bristol, Tennessee. Bill Elliott leads him out of turn two on lap 321. There's your second place car, Ted Little, the 97 car. Rick Mast getting by there in the car number 75. First time we've seen much of Rick today, but now he's up in second place. Chad Little still having a great run. Too. And we see the 29 car go under the 98 of John Andretti. 29 car is in fifth spot. And there's a 24 car in the two and the 88. These are the cars that made pit stop, trying to their best to work their way back to traffic and to get a break and pass someone and really be good. Six, seventh, and eighth. Gordon, Wallace, and Jarrett. Jimmy Spencer is back. Jerry the body is camp. The 98 car is John Andretti, seven laps down currently. There he's on the outside, letting the cars go by. Bill Elliott is the leader. Rick Mask running in second place. Good run for Mask. And there goes Chad Little back around Rick Mask as his Pontiac takes the second spot away. Mask and Remington Arms forward of Butch Mock back in third spot. And Jerry Kinnon said this morning on the 75 car, they changed four springs, four shots, front sway bar, everything on the car. He said, it's been pushing ever since we've been here. It will be loose today. <laughs> Whether it is or not, I don't know. But they changed everything to make it that way. And there's a 29 car that got that lap back, stayed in the lead lap, I should say, when that uh, incident caution number 15, Robert Presley, he is right in front of Jeff Gordon, and he's running in fifth place. Running in fifth spot. There goes Jeff Gordon diving to the inside. Can't quite get by. Now remember the 29. We've said it several times today because there are several cars that are off sequence as far as pit stops are concerned. And the 29 does not have as fresh of tires as Jeff Gordon does. And after we run some laps, this car will start getting a bit loose. But Jeff Gordon hadn't made that pass yet. John Kernan more on Bob, or Bob Preston. Well, whenever I walked across uh, with Bill Engel this morning when we were coming into the uh, garage area, he said they were going to change everything on that car this morning because they just did not feel comfortable with it. He said, you know, we had uh, Ricky Rudd's notes, some notes from when I worked with Ricky Rudd, some Alan Perucci notes. He said, so what we did was we just took those two different setups, flipped the coin, and chose one. So it looks like it's doing all right now. Even though Robert's got some damage on the front end of that car, they're running pretty good. 
second last, but as Ned pointed out, Robert, along with those other four guys up in the front that did not pit, they are out of sequence with the other guys. You know, look at Rusty Wallace, Ned. We talked about, I think Bill Weber said he made a chassis adjustment on that two car, the last pit stop. I'm not sure it's helping the car. Right, and he doesn't seem to be able to pass as quickly as he could. How about Dick Trickle here? He's taking over third from Rick Mask. Trickle, a good run in the junior Don Levy Hollick Myers Ford. Elliott, the leader. Now Rusty gets on the, I'm sorry, Jerry. Rusty gets on the inside of Robert Preston. Here comes Jerry. He'll try to make that move as well. Rusty got down there once before and got completely sideways coming off the turn. Couldn't make the pass. Jarrett makes it up to the inside. Presley slides high. Jarrett will take the spot away. Here comes Spencer down on the inside. And they are side by side in one. Jeff Bodine, the seven car. D. Chris at 41. All those cars trying to take advantage of the 29 cars. He drifts up the race track. Here comes Bodine. Here comes Grissom. Sitting out front riding. As we watch this action back in the pack. Meanwhile, a battle for third spot is shaping up between Dick Trickle and Jeff Gordon. And Trickle moves high. Let's Gordon just go right on by on the inside. And Jeff will try to continue on and catch the 97 car of Chad Little's currently running in second spot. The 97 car, the John Deere Pontiac. We'll check our AutoZone on track interval. There's the 97, and there is the 24 car. Now we see the leader, Bill Elliott, 2.6 and 2.1. So half second in five laps, he gained on the leader, and meanwhile was battling with traffic while he did that. Again, Elliott's one of those drivers that has tires that's been on his car for a while. Our Napa field summary shows Bill Elliott. He's the main team, their leader. Chad Little back to the 21st spot. See where your favorite driver is running. Where they started. Earnhardt from 29th to 14th. Mark Martin from 23rd. Trickle. Good run for Trickle. And back to the next place. That's Lake Speed. And there's the Rick Mass car currently running in fifth spot. He's about to be overhauled by Rusty Wallace. You can see Rusty coming up on him there. That uh, rubber in the left rear in that last pit stop did for Rusty Wallace or did. As you said, I don't think his car is running as well as it was. Luke on the bottom of the racetrack. Now he tries to pull up on the uh, Rick Mass. They should have, excuse me, Jerry, they should have tightened the car up. And maybe after they run a while, it should make it better. And I'm sure that's what he was trying to accomplish get the car where it would be better in longer runs. Maybe be a little bit tight while the tires are still new. But after they run a while, it should help him as he goes by Rick Mass now and takes over the fifth position. Jared started to dive to the inside, saw Dave Marcus up there, wisely backed off and passed Marcus on the outside. Well, let's check in on Rusty with Bill Weber. Well, on that last pit stop, the crew took a spring rubber out of the right rear. And when they were in that traffic, Rusty was really trying to be as patient as Rusty Wallace can. You almost want to say he was tiptoeing around Bristol, which may not be a very good description, but that was what he was doing. Robin Pemberton is crew chief told me they're happy with their car. They wanted to set it up for the end of the race at about lap 300. That's pretty much what they did. 150 to go. No panic, just patience in the Wallace pit. Now let's check Rusty Wallace, see how he's doing with our leader, Bill Elliott, we see. He was 3.4 seconds, five laps later, three seconds. So he gained four tenths of a second in those five laps. 
he's closing in. We might mention to you Bobby Labonte fans. Bobby Labonte, the Interstate Batteries Pontiac, just pulled back on the racetrack after repair. So now, right now, Jeff Gordon, the 24, has closed in on the 97 of Chad Little. And right on the back bumper of Chad Little. Chad has been keeping pace with Bill Elliott out there. Here Gordon goes down on the inside. Makes the pass. Now he's in second. And there are the intervals at the line. That time by. A little over a second back between Gordon and Elliott. I'm impressed with the job Chad Little is doing then. Having a great run in the John Deere Pontiac. A terrific run. And as of last night, he was still concerned about wife Donna, who's back in Charlotte, two weeks overdue for their first baby. C.96. Let's see what Jeff Gordon can do this time when they go by the start finish line. Elliott goes by, 0.82. So he gained almost 15 hundredths of a second. Rusty gained one tenth of a second or twelve hundredths per second that lap. The 082, 291, let's check it again. 056, three tenths of a second. 254. And we got a spin on the back stretch. Looks like the Ned Barrett, the start of a 95, loops it around Ned. That'll certainly close it up. The intervals go completely away. Good, trying his best in that 10 car to get a lap back could not do it and still no caution flag no caution flag as yet and Jeff Gordon has taken the lead yeah, Bill Elliott right. slowed down thought there would be a caution everybody else slowed down as well and uh, Gordon heads up kept motoring and now he's in the lead we could probably give a call to the, the spotter on the 24 car Dave Clinton, for telling Jeff no caution no caution keep it in the mat You see what happened to Barry as he came off that second corner just a moment ago. Barry C just comes off the corner all by himself, gets on the accelerator, around he goes, tries to, he makes another 360, tries to keep it out of the wall, and does keep it out of the wall. And he's another driver's done a good job here today, Ben. He got a lap down one time, got it back, and was still in the lead lap when this happened. There we see Elliott coming by. He thinks taking the caution flag. He slows down. Kyle Petty drives away. Here goes Ricky Rudd by, and here goes. Jeff Gordon about to take the lead. You're right. The spotter could get credit for that. So Tapman, a job well done. And less than 150 miles remaining here in Bristol, Tennessee. Jeff Gordon is our leader. Bill Elliott runs in second spot. Chad Little is third. Dick Trickle fourth. And Rusty Wallace in fifth. The man who's won the last two 350 in a row, trying to hold on to make it three. Back with more in a moment. Alan Bestwick here. Join me for NASCAR Shop Talk after the race. Great NASCAR Winston Cup champion caps like these to go with NASCAR Winston Cup champions like these. Terry Labonte and Jeff Gordon with me. NASCAR Shop Talk right after the race. Hey, give me my hat back. Thank you. And following Shop Talk today, we'll go to Amelia Island, Florida for the Balsh and Long Championships. Tennis. Yeah, we're going to get volleying in a hurry. Well, Michael Waltrip watches the Darrell Waltrip go by and watch Ricky Rudd go by. There's a leader, Jeff Gordon, trying to get by Michael Waltrip. This is the back stretch. And there goes Michael. Michael is in 22nd position. Goes a lap down. And of course, the man who will be on Shop Talk after the conclusion of the Food City 500, Jeff Gordon. Rusty Wallace takes over fourth from Chad Little. Dave Garrett will take over fifth. Terry Devine will take over sixth. There's Jeff Gordon still fighting traffic. our leader Elliot running in second spot our Napa field summary you can follow where your favorite driver is running where they started where they currently are in the field
about uh, five laps ago, Jeff Gordon was five seconds ahead of Rusty Wallace. But now that's been trimmed down to a little over three seconds. Jeff got in that heavy traffic that is still in right here, and that has cost him a lot of time on the racetrack. Uh, Rusty will have to deal with that traffic too when he gets up to it. See, Mike Skinner very slow in the apron of the racetrack. Looks like he's done today in the Lowe's Home Improvement Chevrolet as Darrell Walter goes a lap down to the leader, another lap down. And a little bit of nostalgia. Those of you who just joined us late on Darrell Walter's car. Those are the colors of the Budweiser car. Darrell drove in the middle 80s. The first of five different color schemes you'll see in that car for the remainder of 1997, celebrating his 25th anniversary. Unfortunately, then he's not running that well today. Well, you see, he's been in and out the pits a lot on green flag, Jerry. He's being shown in 29th position, 15 laps behind the leader, Jeff Gordon. There we go. Jeff Bodine trying to get by Jimmy Spencer. It looks like we've seen this all day today. <laughs> well, that's, they have raced and raced and raced. It looks like uh, at least two thirds of the time that we've been watching those guys have been running together. So Bodine was able to get by. Now can Mark Martin get by? He comes up, gets on the inside. Steve Grissom, the 41 car, trying his best, trying to follow. Rusty Wallace has taken over third spot, as you can see on our pylon. And here comes Mark trying to get on the inside. Spencer hanging on tough on the outside. Martin will take this spot away, and here comes Grissom. Oh, near contact between Grissom and Spencer, but we do have one car being tapped from behind. That was the 71 car. Got a little bump from Rusty. Well, this is some of the heavy traffic that Jeff Gordon was going through a little while ago when he lost so much time to Rusty Wallace as he was coming up through there. And now Rusty's facing it. He's out clear now, though. Has no cars in front of him. And we watch the Jerry went out of the back. It's Morgan Shepard takes his car. I thought he was going to pitch on the back, but he's slow on the inside of the race track. Now, Jeff Gordon has picked back up to over a five second lead over Rusty once again. Because, as you said, Rusty had to get in that traffic too, and it cost him the same amount of time as Gordon. Well, let's show you our interval from the leader there is Jeff Gordon, Bill Elliott, a little over two seconds back. We see the 24 car pass the 22 and put Warwick Burton the lap down in 20th position. This time we'll check it out. We see Rusty Wallace came by, and that time he was a little bit on Rusty. Bill Elliott's hanging pretty tough there in second spot. Yeah, with those tires as old as they are, and those cars, everybody's going to have to make at least one more pit stop. Dale Earnhardt is struggling, struggling in the Goodrich Chevrolet as Brett Bodine goes by. Brett Earnhardt was having a great one, pardon me, he had a great one earlier, but he has now lost five spots in the last three or four laps. And he's about to go a lap down. Jeff Gordon is coming up, not too far behind Dale Earnhardt as he tries to stay up on that outside there. And there you see Gordon, how close he has come now. One car, Hutt Strickland, the car number eight between he and Earnhardt. Earnhardt running in the 19th position. Here's Dale Jarrett trying to go around Rusty Wallace. They've been battling ever since they restarted. Here's Terry Labonte. He'll come by as well. Rusty's car, I don't think, is as good as it was earlier. Now here comes Dick Trickle closes in. He's trying to get by Rusty Wallace. Yeah, but they just passed Dick not too long ago. Now, I'm sure that, that Todd Parrott and that crew have made improvements on his car as well as Terry Labonte's crew, Gary Dehart. And uh, his crew made improvements on his car, too, so they're certainly not taking anything away from them that they could pass Rusty Wallace, but Rusty had been so strong all day. Well, 19 cars on the lead lap, and Earnhardt is the 19th. As Jeff Gordon tries to put him a lap down with about 112 laps remaining. Earnhardt trying to stay on that lead lap. He knows if you stay on the lead lap, you can win. A lap down, you can't win. Ooh, Gordon comes up close to the outside retaining wall. And the stand, the, all the fans stand up and applaud as Jeff Gordon goes by or boot, whichever the case may be. 118,000 of them anyway got up on their feet to watch that pass. They said something. <laughs> so, yeah, so 
Bernard still continues to, to, to struggle in 1997. This is one of the longer green flag runs that we've had. We'll let the field go by here and see where your favorite driver is on the racetrack. You see Ted Musgrave got his car. That's going to be a rolling race. That's Bill Elliott, our second place car, who won this race back in the spring, 1988. Some contact between Elliott and Ricky Rudd. A little bit of a nudge on the typical Bristol racing. Our snapshot of Bill Elliott. Ricky Not Rudd is in 30th position, 17 laps down, but I mentioned earlier that he's been running almost as fast as the leaders since he got back out there. But he, he got involved in a skirmish earlier in the race and uh, had some damage on his tied board. Had to work on it a while, but he's running good now. There's a third place car, Dale Jerry, and Ned. You know, we've been running about 100 laps these cars have. Yeah, this is the longest uh, that they've been out there since they've been in the pits. Well, next time by, they will actually have run exactly 100 laps. Getting nice calculation. He must have borrowed Bob's calculator. They pit on lap 295, and it'll be 395 next time by. And there's their fourth place car, Cherry Labonte. Fifth place car, Rusty Wallace. And then behind him is Dick Trickle in the car number 90. Jeff Bodine, what a run he is having. He's hanging on to those Western Cup points and could really improve himself today with a good finish. There's the QBC LA West sponsored car. Six star Mark Martin is their eighth place car. Is Bodine. He's on the inside of Joe Nemechek and takes, goes by the Bell South Chevy. Nemechek is the 21st speed, one lap down. You never see uh, eighth place car, Mark Martin. Then comes the ninth place car of Steve Grissom, the Kodiak Chevrolet. He's hanging in there. Had a good day so far. And there's a 10th place car of Chad Little, the car number 97. Chad started back in 21st. That was high in second. And running 10th. And Spencer, he still continues to try to run that high groove. He is our 11th place car. 11th place car is 75 of Rick Maston, Remington Arms, Ford. And he'll be in 12th position behind the Spencer car. Schrader back in 13th, the car number 33, the Skull Chevrolet. I just off one. <laughs> Looks like he's closing on the back of Mast. Jimmy Mayfield, 15th place this afternoon with Kmart, RC Cola. That's Brett Bonin. He's not too far away. That's a battle for 14 spots. Amazing we still got that many cars on the lead lap. But we've had a lot of caution flags, but still all that trouble. And the last car on the lead lap is this car right here, uh, Bobby Hamilton, car number 43. And you can see the leader right behind him about to put in another lap down. Or a lap down. He'd been a lap down once before, got back again. That's Michael Waltrip, Sitco Ford right in front of him. He slides high. Hamilton goes downstairs. So will Jeff Gordon. Less than 100 laps to go now at Bristol, Tennessee. And those are the 16 cars you just saw on the lead lap. As the final 100 laps of Thunder Valley coming your way. 37th running of the Food City 500. Jeff Gordon trying to make it three in a row here on the high base at Bristol. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Motor Speedway, 18th caution flag today, coming out on lap 409. This beautiful shot of the field slowing down atop this Rose Bowl of racetracks, courtesy to fine folks at Penzoil, the Penzoil Copter Cam. I have brought Bristol Motor Speedway. Now, a time correction on RPM tonight. It's going to be on at 6 o'clock Eastern time. That'll be at 6 Eastern time. And Kenny Main will have Formula One highlights from Argentina, NHRA, Fram National highlights, and a complete cart wrap-up from the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach, California. That's Kenny Main and company, RPM tonight at 6 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN2. Now, there was the caution flag, but no crash. Morgan Shepard had a flat tire or something. 
and uh, stopped on the racetrack. That's why NASCAR had to throw the caution flag. Cars racing back to the line. Here comes the leader. 24 car, the 36 of Derrick Cope trying to get a lap back. Did he make it? He's going to be close. Where's the line? Where's the white line? I think he's going to make it, Ben. Yes, he did. He sure did. He made it. Pit stops. Ah, uh, good move by Derek Cope. Let's check into the pits with John Kernan. The caution came at a great time for Bill Elliott. They were going to have to pit about 15 laps from now. Right side work already done. No changes on the top car. Left side tires on. Let's go down to Jeff Gordon, the leader, and Bill Webber's pit. Right sides are on the DuPont Chevrolet. Left sides going on. One count of fuel. Elliott begins the parade down pit road. Now Gordon is down. He will beat the 94 out. 18-7 for Gordon to the back pits and Ray. Mark Martin just brought the Valvoline Ford in. The car that needed this pit stop the most, though, was Dale Earnhardt. They said his car was very, very tight. He just couldn't turn it in the corners. Again, no chassis adjustment to the car number six here, so they're going with tires again. Mark very happy with his race car. and the valve thing through back there for Mark. This should be the last pit stop, Jerry. They should be able to go the rest of the way now. Well, just 90 laps remaining, so if they stay green, as you said, Ned, there will be no more pit stops, but don't bet on it. We've had 18 cautions thus far, and we've got a way to go. Back in a moment. You're watching NASCAR Winston Cup Racing today from Bristol Motor Speedway. Next week, we're in Martinsville, Virginia, Friday with qualifying at live 3 p.m. Eastern time on the Deuce. Saturday, NASCAR Featherlight Modifies live at 2 o'clock Eastern time on the Deuce, followed by a happy hour in the afternoon at 5.30. Then on Sunday, NASCAR today at 12.30 and our live flag to flag coverage on the Gooding Headache Powder 500, 1 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN. We go back to green in Bristol, Tennessee. And Sterling Marlin just didn't have the motor to get a good start. He was down on the inside of Jeff Gordon. Dale Earnhardt was behind him, hoping to get a lap back, but he couldn't do it because Marlin couldn't go. And here's a change for the lead, Benny. Rusty Wallace, a great run off the second corner, just on the inside of Jeff Gordon, and takes the spot away. And then I said we haven't seen him pass one another. Now we have. We have. I wonder if Gordon's car is uh, quite as strong as it was before. Maybe this set of tires not as good. Dale Jarrett working on him there now. Let's check in with Bill Webber. And I think it might be that Rusty Wallace's car is a little bit better. When the caution came out, he mentioned to his crew, he told them, I wish I had that spray rubber back in there. So they dropped two pounds of air pressure on the right rear tire, and Rusty is flying. DJ looking at the 24, trying to get in the second so he can chase down Wallace. We talked about what a great run that Dick Trip in the 90 car and the 41 of Steve Goods was having. I think both those cars were black flag for speeding on pit road or something. They have fallen back to 17th and 18th, and evidently they were black flag for some something they did on the route. I'm assuming it was speeding on pit road. Meanwhile, on the racetrack, great battle for second spot. Dale Jarrett inches away from Jeff Gordon. Took a look under him like two laps ago off turn two. Now Gordon pulls away by about three. Four feet, give it. And once again, as we have seen all day, the Jeff Bodine, the seven car, Jimmy Spencer, the 23, battling for position. Right now, it's the sixth spot. Ned with fresh rubber, the speed should be up. Let's check the speeds they come by. Well, they definitely should be up from what they were before. Yeah, over 118 miles an hour. Terry Labonte there at 119 miles an hour. So Jeff Gordon, he thinks his car is going to come in, but he needs And there's trouble behind that. 23 and 7 finally got together up in turn four. And there's so much smoke that they can't see. The 75 car makes contact with a 98. And here's Wallace. Here is Gordon and Earnhardt coming through. Jeff Gordon up high. Earnhardt dives low. Got his lap back. And Earnhardt got his lap back. Went all the way back to the bottom of the racetrack. And by Rusty Wallace. And that's the 19th car. Just hoping we wouldn't set a We got one more to tie and two to break it. Let's show you what happened to bring out caution number 19. 
Okay, here's the seven car, the black car on the left. Jimmy Spencer comes up behind him in the yellow car. Starts down on the inside. Bodine comes down a little bit. Spencer had the nose in there, and they make contact, and around they go. And Spencer nails the gas, does a 360, and watch as these cars continue to come through. There we see the 90 car, the 41 car trying to get by. You will see, in a moment, we're going to see the leader, Rusty Wallace, come in. Here's Arnard as he tries to get a lap back. There's a second place car, Jeff Gordon. And yes, Arnard dives down to the inside on the apron of the racetrack and passes Rusty Wallace to get that lap back. Well, he just had turned left and nailed the throttle. Let's go down to Ray Dunlap in the Earnhardt pit. Well, guys, you called it right up there. It was a huge break for Dale Earnhardt and the Goodwrench crew, but look at this tire. This was the last tire that they pulled off the race car. Everyone was wondering, why are they going backwards so fast? The tire was blistering, and Dale just couldn't hold on. A big break for Dale Earnhardt. Here's Jeff Bodine in the pits in the front straightaway. The QVC crew, now Pat Trice and company going to work there. We had some contact with the left side of them. He hit the wall with the left side, so I guess the toe end's messed up. They're going to have to adjust that. Yeah, bad break for Jeff Bodine. He had run in the top ten just about all day long. A tough break here for him. The L.A. West QBC car for Bodine. 425 laps are complete. 75 laps remain. They all pitted on lap 410, so got to believe unless someone has a problem they're not going to lose that valuable track position. Well Dale Earnhardt's pitting on the back stretch but he's the last car on the lead lap so that's a good smart move by him and I think uh, Derek Cope also pitting back there on the back stretch he come in they have nothing to lose everything to gain. Well fresh rubber on the Goodrich Chevrolet he as you said Ned is in 16th spot back with more from Thunder Valley in a moment. Bristol resumed a half a lap ago. 429 to be exact. The 19th concert of the day is over, and Rusty just pulls away. Well, he got just. <laughs> Jeff Gordon caught on the outside of the lap car Ward Burton. And right now, Dale Jarrett closes up once again, closes in on the back of that chair, and trying to take that second spot away. There's a battle for his position as Chad Little under the. And there we go, battle for second. Dale Jarrett put him in second. Jarrett goes around Jeff Gordon, taking second spot away. Terry Labonte moving in on that bunch. Let's check in with Bill Weber. Well, the strategy on the 24 car has been that it takes a while for the tires in the car to come in after a pit stop. So Ray Everham, after that last pit stop, told Jeff Gordon, settle down, we'll be okay. And Jeff said, I don't know. This car does not feel the same as it has all day long. So Ray said, well, maybe these tires are a little different. Right now, Jeff trying to get back under the 88. And he's going to pick up that position. And Terry Labonte goes along with him. So we'll have to wait and see if Gordon's car is getting better as the laps go by. Well, Jeff Gordon did exactly to Dale Jarrett what Dale Jarrett had done to Jeff Gordon. He got up on him, worked him hard. Got him loose, took the air off his motor and passed him. Gordon stayed right on the back bumper of Jarrett, did exactly the same thing, and uh, both of the hit cars went by. Well, let's check in once again with Bill on Dale Jarrett. Uh, Dale Jarrett may have a tire going down. They think it's okay now, but he thought for a while he had a tire going down, and that's what happened right there. So DJ thought he had one going down, feels more comfortable now. Have to work it in and make sure he'll be careful for the next couple of laps here. All right, that twosome, that hit the duo of Gordon and Labonte reeling in Rusty Wallace. That's the interval right there. 1.51 seconds back for the 24 car. I would guess that Jarrett thinking he had a flat tire was the fact that Gordon got up under his rear bumper and just made him so loose that uh, he thought he had a flat tire. There's two cars. I'm told are gaining on Rusty Wallace. We see 1.42. Let's see. 1.36, so eight hundredths of a second closer that time. 63 laps remain here at Bristol, Tennessee. 
You see, Terry Labonte is not getting close enough to Jeff Gordon to get him loose. Like Ned was talking about, that would not be something good to do to your teammate that time. Almost a third of a second they gained on the leader. A little bit of traffic there. The Dave Marcus car, they clear that. You see Dale Jarrett's car, top of your screen. Chad Little is running in fifth place. Mark Martin is sixth. Passing those cars, we see lost two tenths of a second. The leader is the second and third place cars. Jeff Gordon, Terry Labonte. Jeff it away back to 1.28 seconds. See Jarrett keeps forward. As you said, Ned Chad Little, great run back in fifth spot. John Deere Pontiac. Here we see the Jeff Bodine, Jimmy Spencer car. Oh, they made contact again. Around goes Jeff Bodine. And he's Steve catching Grissom. Steve Grissom. Hard contact in the wall. What a tough break for Steve Grissom. Got caught up in somebody else's team. Mm. Saw some contact a few laps ago between Spencer and Jeff Bodine, and that time also, once again, we see. We just hope that uh, Steve Grissom is okay. We see the left rear tire of Grissom. He had heavy contact in the wall. Oh, uh, the window net is down. That's good news. You see oh, Steve man. moving around inside the car. What a tough break. Die, Steve. Tough break, buddy. Oh, man, don't get any tougher than that. Poor, it just felt like a thing. All it hurt there just knocked the wheel off the left rear. <laughs> well, it could be that the wheel hurt. I lose. promise. But, yeah. Steve Grissom said it's hurt. Yeah. I promise. Wheels don't come off, Gary, unless it's got a hub or a stud hooked to it. That's right. I know, I'm talking the body. It, it, it just caught it about a couple inches. Now we were following the seven car of Jeff Bodine and watching the 23 car of Jimmy Spencer move in. This is down the back stretch. Here comes the 23 car. They come off the corner. Spencer goes by on the outside. Here comes Bodine. They come off the corner and there's some contact. Now, here comes the 41 car and slams in that outside wall. We did not see that. We'll, we'll see it from a different angle. And Spencer's car gets up on the wall there. Yes, it did. Right side came off the ground. He stays out there, but boy, he could have some some front end, toe end damage to his car. Well, Spencer kept on going. He's still in seventh place, as you said, Ned, but he took a lick on that wall. We saw some sparks fly. Now Steve Grissom has climbed out of the Kodiak Chevrolet. And he hit a ton up there in turn one. Car and 23 was trying to wreck each other, weren't they? Yeah, they won't both of them in the trailer after the race. We, he started to go to the bottom, but he made it. I would see Steve limping as he leaves. Well, there's what's left of Jeff Bodine's QVC Ford. Well, we have tied the records for caution set in the spring of 1989. 20th caution flag. After 444 laps, Rusty leads. Our speed roll coverage of the 37th running of the NASCAR Winston Cup Food City 500 from Thunder Valley. Bristol Motor Speedway is being brought to you by Team Monte Carlo, Chevy, the Cars More Champions Trust. By Bridge and Stratton, your number one source of power. Make sure all your outdoor power equipment has a Bridge and Stratton engine. And by Quaker State Motor Oil for a clean running engine. There's a car number 23 coming in for a Tire change has just been uh, on pit road. He actually stopped twice because he was far back in the field. They had changed two and then catch up the field, came back in and changed the left side this last time. So now Spencer has four fresh tires on that board. He probably has got a toe-in problem as well because there's pretty heavy contact with the outside retaining wall. We saw the right side jump off the ground. That might not show up until it gets up to full speed. Yeah, that's right. Well, you really got a feel for Steve Grissom. He's the one that really suffered the most from this incident. Once again, here's what happened to bring out caution number 20. Cars going to the third corner. That's Jeff Bodine on the bottom of seven and 23 
Jimmy Spencer. They'd make contact about 20, 30 laps ago. Come off the corner, and once again, there's contact. Spencer continues on, but Bodine spins. And watch as Steve Grissom comes along and nails a seven in the rear. He cuts his left rear down. He spins and slams in the outside retaining wall. An innocent victim, Steve Grissom. There we see the contact between the 7 and the 23. We saw the 23 go up. Now watch the 41 with no place to go. He's on the brakes hard. He's trying to go to the outside. Can't quite make it. Around he goes and slams the wall with the left side. Steve Grissom, who had qualified ninth today, running in the top 10. Most of the afternoon, there's the right side of that Kodiak Chevy. Looks pretty good. Larry Hedrick on car, but the left side is where all the damage was, took me the left rear as he came by and caught the left rear of Jeff Bodine's Ford. See that Aladar up on the C pillow? Uh, year 2000. It's a computer outfit that they said they've got it figured out how to convert all the computers to put down 2001 or the year 2000. Hmm. Because that's supposedly going to be a huge problem. For banks and people like that, that uh, everything is dated. How to convert from 1999 to 2000. Yeah. Oh, there's Rusty Wallace weaving back and forth. They've Doyle Ford has given the signal one lap will be back under green. He's Mr. Bristol in the 90s. 14 races, four wins, eight top fives, 11 top tens, three poles, and 15 qualifying attempts. Now remember, Jeff Gordon and Terry Labonte were gaining on him right before that caution came out. They got, they'll have 50 laps to go when they take the green flag. Well, buckle your seat belts. The Battle of Bristol is about to get serious. 50 laps remain. Actually, they'll take the green on lap 451. Makes it 49 to go. After 20 caution flags, here they come out of turn four. Rusty, Jeff, Terry, Dale. Chad. Well, that's a great start once again. Seems like it takes a couple laps for that 24 car to define Chevy to get up to speed. But then once it does, it's all been running. between the 24 and the 5. Summary showing you where your favorite driver really did trickle from 19th to 10th. I know you folks didn't see that, but trust me, it was exciting. <laughs> it was. <laughs> now Mark the 5 and 24, excuse me, they get hooked up, and where Rusty is pulled away, what about 12, 14 car lengths, and it looks like it's about the time the 24 car begins to come in. Mark Martin just moved around Chad Little to cover fifth. Mark been batting that. Back pits situation all day long. Maybe he shouldn't have to make him have pit stop, so whatever he's got now, he can show it and come out of here. Terry Labonte, Kellogg's and Chevrolet, third place currently. Tries to close down on the 24 car. Bill Weber. First of all, Jeff, what happened out there? Well, I mean, it's pretty obvious, wasn't it? Spencer ran into me. Uh, I passed him a couple times during the race. Uh, you know, no contact. Uh, we did one time, but the uh, I got running through two from behind. But he just flat run into me. That was really stupid. Uh, I'm not whining. I'm not bitching. I'm just stating a fact that was stupid. Ain't the first time he's done that either. Uh, I normally kind of smooth things over. It's time to tell it. 
excuse my language. He ran into me. What happened after that, I hit him on the uh, caution on purpose, that was for sure. After that, my steering broke coming off turn four. We fixed the thing, but the tie rod broke, and, and I hit him and a bunch of other guys. Uh, but uh, they're going to talk to me. They're going to have a talk with it in the trailer, but that's fine. But he ran into me. It's about time I guess somebody told the truth. He's wild out there. He's crazy. Ridiculous. Okay, that's uh, about all Jeff has. Uh, John Kernan, I believe, is with Steve Grissom. Steve Grissom has been checked out in the infield care center. He's limping. Uh, Steve, are you okay? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. Just come in and had him check my foot. But I'm fine. That's unfortunate to deal with Cody. Had a good car today. Wasn't able to capitalize with it. The ankle that he injured was his right ankle. It's the same one he injured at Atlanta, and it is swollen right now. And you can see Steve kind of limping off, getting ready to uh, go change clothes and head for the home. Boy, well, a moment ago, a close call for another car. We could have had caution flag number 21, as you heard the, the truth from some of those drivers. The Bobby Hamilton machine. He goes in the corner, goes up. He and Trickle and Jeff Bodine comes in, gets in the back. I mean, watch this. Just he might have brushed the wall, but no heavy contact. That's Brent Bodine in the car number 11 that made contact with him there. And there's our leader. 35 laps to go for Rusty Wallace. Gordon seems to be closing in a little bit, guys. He's pulling away from his teammate Terry Labonte and closing in on Rusty Wallace. Mark Martin's closing in on Dale Jarrett. So a lot of racing up here in the top five. Here we go. We'll check up the line and see. Point eight five of a second, eighty five hundredths of a second. Jeff Gordon is behind Rusty Wallace. Now the next time by, we'll check that again and see what it tells us. Here they come off turn four. There goes Rusty. Here comes Jeff. Point eight three, almost the same. I was cheering for Earnhardt past Bill Elliott oh, for seventh spot. Well, he got that lap back on that previous caution flag and now is all the way back up in seventh position from high atop Bristol Motor Speedway with the Pennzoil Copter Cam shots. The sun is out and the shadows beginning to show. But this crowd of 118,000 today has certainly got their money's worth. When we come back, we'll see if Gordon can catch Rusty with just 30 to go. Back in a moment. Back at Bristol, Tennessee, laps winding down, 22 to go, and Gordon is on a tear. Jeff Gordon has closed the interval, cut it in half the last three laps. We can see just a few car lengths, just a couple of car lengths between he and Rusty Wallace, and heavy traffic right in front of him. Zach Gordon on the outside. Wow. Several lap cars in front of these cars. And we're going to see a little bumping and grinding here, folks, once again. Those cars up there trying to stay out in front of the leaders, and the leaders jockeying around trying to stay in front of each other. We told you the top of the show, Bristol is beating, banging, bumping. Short track at its pitch. Gordon dives down to the inside. Meanwhile, Rusty's on the outside of barrier. Dave Marcus stayed down out of the way, so does Barry. That took care of that portion of the traffic. Turn up on David Green. David won't give him any tips. Stay out of the way. Now watch Terry Labonte coming in from the right side of your picture. Terry Labonte now closing in on these two who are in heavy traffic. Both these Henry cars right now are fast. And here goes Gordon on the outside, making a run on the outside. Rusty comes off the corner. Tries to get by the 96. It'll be 16 laps to go next time by. One, two, three, right there, together. Sterling Marlin and David Green almost got, in fact, they did get together coming off turn two, but they got straightened out. 
Saturday. Flashed by Rick Mass, Remington Arms Ford, and now there's some clear traffic. If Gordon wants to make a move, this is his chance. Here he goes. He's looking. He's looking. He can't quite get there. Let's get dive down to that inside group. So that's mine for the moment. And we'll see if, if Gordon is able to get up there and stay right on his back bumper and get him loose like he did Jerry a little bit earlier. Not getting any close, getting him loose. He's letting him get Rusty Wallace loose. He thinks if he gets by, if George Jeff can get by, he'll be able to follow. Twelve laps to go this time by Wallace, Gordon, Labonte just inches apart. Well, he's got a good run. Jeff has a run. He's looking. Make it. Rusty slipped a little bit coming off the of turn two, but it wasn't enough for Gordon. Boy, he's got him loose there. A little bit of bumper tag that time will be the 24 and the two. It'll be 10 to go next time by for the Miller Lite Ford of Rusty Walls. His car really slipping and sliding now coming off the corner. Yes, he is. That car is uh, not handling the way it was earlier in the race. As a matter of fact, Rusty's driving so defensive right now that Dale, Jarrett, Mark, Martin are going to catch him as well. Yeah, they are. They'll be there before it's over. They are catching up to them. They were about three seconds behind. They cut it down to less than two. And there's still nine laps to go. And they're going to come up on heavy traffic here again in a moment. Russ, uh, Terry Labonte looked on the inside of his teammate. Terry might have the fastest car right now if he can get by his teammate. And he looks on the inside. Here goes Labonte. Ooh, just slammed the door. Can't quit, quite get by. And Rusty's loving that because he's able to pull away by three car lengths when they made that little move. And remember, both those guys, Labonte and Gordon, will be on shop talk in about three or four minutes, about two minutes of the checkered flag ball. Top of the hour, 118,000 people on their feet here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Six laps remain. All of a sudden, Jeff Gordon not able to get off the corner like he was a few laps ago, Ned. Those tires have been on there now for almost 100 laps, so they're all getting a little bit squirrely out there as they head off the turns. And boy, Rusty Wallace doing a great job of protecting that inside line. There's Ray Evernham, the crew chief, team manager for Jeff Gordon, watching intently as his driver tries to take the lead. There's Robin Pemberton, the crew chief for the Penske Racing South machine, the Miller Racing Ford, and Rusty Wallace. While they're doing that, you mentioned a moment ago that Dale Jarrett and Mark Martin is catching them. They're moving in ever so close, but I don't think they're going to be able to move in close enough to do anything with just a few laps to go. Traffic right in front of them. Three to go this time by. And the body looks on the inside of Borden. Tries, tries, can't quite do it. Actually, that was two to go, so they will wave the white flag on Rusty Wallace, point five, three, three miles away from win number two in 1997. And heavy traffic right in front of these cars. I don't know if it's going to play in anybody's hands. Gordon takes a look again. Rusty comes down, slams the door. Gordon on here. Here comes Jeff Gordon to take the lead. Gordon takes the lead. Rusty slips. Jeff Gordon will win at Bristol, Tennessee. Wallace second, Lamonte third. Look at Everham. He is. Look at him, man. Wow. And Ray Everham is ecstatic. Unbelievable. Less than a quarter of a mile from the finish. Rusty gets high, slips the car. Let's go down to Ray Dunlap. Ray Everham, how can that possibly happen out there? I don't know. I'm going to have to watch it. I just, I have no idea. All I, I watched the crowd and they all stood up. I really thought Terry had us and he come over there and I mean, it's uh, unbelievable. I mean, you got to thank God. I mean, that's the way that stuff happens. Uh, I don't know, but thanks to DuPont, 
Quaker State. Have to see everybody that helps us out. I want to say hello to Rick and Linda. Boss, I uh, hope that didn't hurt your heart. It hurt mine. Man, two teammates up there fighting for the lead, and Gordon pulls it off. All right, here's the replay of that final lap. Okay, they're going to turn three. Rusty gets down on the inside. His car slips a little bit there. Gordon comes up underneath him, takes the lead, and runs away. Rusty still wobbly as he comes off the turn. Here comes Terry Labonte. Almost gets by him at start finish line, but couldn't quite make the pass. I think. Did they I, make contact? I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know if Rusty might have touched the apron with the left front or there was some contact back there. I really can't tell. They tell me that if you touch the apron with the left front, it really kicks the back end out, something that some of the drivers were concerned about. Maybe three and a half feet at best, the separation between the two and the five. A reaction over in the Gordon pit. Is Ray Abraham happy or what? Yeah, they... <laughs> And there's a big smile on the young man who has won his third straight Food City 500. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's go down to our McDonald's winner circle and hear from Jeff Gordon. Bill? <laughs> uh, Jeff Gordon, I'm, that's amazing. Congratulations. That's three wins in a row at this race. Tell me about the last lap. Well, that certainly was interesting because uh, not only was I trying to get by Terry or uh, um, Rusty's, oh, Rusty, I mean, he was tough all day. I knew he was going to be the guy to beat, but I was trying to get by him, but now I had to worry about Terry. And, you know, that set of tires wasn't as good as the time before. I was a little bit tight and then I'd get loose, but uh, I tell you what, I got to thank these guys on this DuPont Chevrolet. They did an awesome job today in the pits and uh, gave me a great race car. And, uh, you know, it was pretty tight down there. I mean, that's what Bristol's all about. You get down to the closing lap at Bristol, and, and it's any man for himself. I've seen it done many times. Were you concerned on that last set of tires that your car was not going to come around to you? It really didn't. It never really came as good as it was earlier, but uh, it was still good enough to catch Rusty, and that's all I needed. Well, congratulations. That's a great win for you. And Ray had said late in the race that his money was on you. Well, he better put his money on me, but uh, that doesn't mean it's going to be guaranteed every time. But I put my money on him, and I tell you what, these guys have, have been great. And really proud of this one today. That's Jeff Gordon in victory lane to John Kernan with Rusty Wallace. Yeah. Rusty Wallace is over by the gas pumps now to your second place finish. And Rusty, that what a wild finish. What happened there? How did he get around you? <laughs> Just a lap car down there in turn one and two with the last lap. Checker flags waving or white flags waving. And... Uh, and a 23 car was on the bottom of the track there, and we all had to go around the outside of him. When that happened, it, allowed, it let him get up on my rear end, and uh, he get close to me. Then I got down to turn three and got one of those old love taps, and I got up the racetrack a little bit and uh, got second. That was about it. Well, it was still a good run for Rusty Wallace, uh, finishing second place today. Let's go upstairs, Jerry. Well, we talk about how close it is at Bristol and what the action is like, Ned and Benny, but that was one whale of a finish. You know, Brute's going to have 130,000 seats here in August. That ain't enough, Bruton. I'm telling you, it ain't enough. <laughs> well, that's 118,000 that enjoyed it today. They're going to go home and tell their friends we come back in August, 130,000. That's not what Jeff Bird wants to hear. More seats, more work, but great action here at Thunder Valley. We'll come back and talk to some more people after this. Don't go away.